Hello and welcome to another episode of The Grind Bin. I'm Mike Wood. I'm Chris Mann. Today we're going to be talking about 1986's Thrashin. A film that is a series of montages of people suiting up and doing things in circles. Hey Bobby, I got the money! Well, I have to say, I was a little hesitant to do this movie at first because it doesn't really fall into the exploitation or grind bin or grindhouse genre. Not really, but it does exploit well, uh, culture, yes. if you will. So, I've always been fascinated by movies that pick a culture or a subculture in right. society and then try and make a movie around it. We have a lot of examples of it. You have uh, Airborne, which is a good rollerblading movie, mm-hmm. um, Gleam in the Cube with Christian Slater. Breakin 1 and 2 and then you also have Beach Street and there's a ton more of them mm. you know but these are ones I remember from my childhood but one always stood out to me as the best of the best and by best I mean worst and that's Thrashin <laughs> which mm. is a man's interpretation of skateboard <laughs> skateboarding culture <laughs> uh, that I've always thought of as a joke and still do think of as a joke yeah. but Man, looking into this movie and watching all these extras and hearing the commentary, it makes me love it even more. I mean, you have this director to thank for all of the bad stereotypes that are out there about <laughs> skating. Yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of nice. Like, okay, so we'll get into it. But I have the DVD of this when it first came out in 2003. Mm-hmm. You know, it's weird to think it's 13 years ago <sighs> that that DVD came out. Uh, but back then it was just laughable, you know, and yeah. it's still, it's funny to see how charming they thought the movie was even back then. <laughs> uh, That's the problem when you do a period film like that. It's trying to be contemporary. It ages very badly. But in that sense, it's very, it makes it that much more entertaining down the line. And it's. Yeah. It, and, well, and I think the only reason that anybody remembers this movie is because of Josh Brolin. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. That is it. If it wasn't for Josh Brolin being in this movie. Or being successful later. Yeah, probably <laughs> nobody would have remembered it. Yeah. Because this movie bombed. I mean, bombed mm. in the movie theaters. It was a very low-budget movie to begin with, but it did not do well. And uh, we're going to get into it later. It's some people that were in the movie uh, don't write fondly of it in their memoirs and such. So The producer of this movie, Alan Sachs really interesting guy he is basically the main person still pushing this movie well back in 2003 when the dvd yeah. came out he's on every special feature and he is a trip he is a really really interesting crazy this is guy. His baby and he's not gonna let it go like oh. the this is his baby to the point the umbilical cord is yet to be cut oh yeah he does not want to let go <laughs> the good times this film brought him Alan got his start as the creator and writer of Welcome Back, Cotter. He then went on to do lots of TV movies, and then Thrashin was one of his few movies to hit the theaters. We'll get into a second how he pitched it, but I'll tell you the rest of his career. He went to do Disney Channel and ABC Family movies. Oh. So, Smart House, 1999, he produced that. It was directed by LeVar Burton. Color of Friendship, 2000. The Other Me, 2000. You Wish, 2003. Pixel Perfect, 2004. Now, here's where he kind of succeeded way more than any of these movies in the past. 2008, Jonas Brothers, Live in the Dream. He was the producer of that. No kidding. Oh, good for him. Camp Rock, 2008. Yeah, I know that one. Jonas Brothers, The 3D Concert Experience, 2009, producer. And Camp Rock 2, The Final Jam, 2010. (laughs) Yep. He's still working. Uh, He also co-wrote this movie, which you can definitely tell... Uh, <laughs> I mean, the special features. And he wrote some of that Disney Channel stuff as well. So, the way he pitched this movie, which I, it's the story is on the special features on the DVD, and I made Chris listen to it. I made him listen to it because I think this guy is insane. Yeah, Mike didn't tell me the gun wasn't loaded when he made me watch it, but. <laughs> the way he pitched it is, and I'll paraphrase, is that somebody had written an article about a punk movie he was making. And he gets the article, and on half of the page, the other half of the page, the bottom of it, is a story about a girl 
skate gang called the Hags. And then he puts it in the special feature. He's like, and I was like, what's this? You know, uh, they take it up over half the page. It should have been my story. I, I don't really know what's going on. So I read into it and I realized there was a whole skateboarding culture. And from there, I was hooked and thought, this would probably make a great movie. And the idea for Thrashing was born. Out of hubris. Out of <laughs> <laughs> so he went around and he drew a bunch of drawings on paper, which they... <laughs> The These drawings way. are amazing. He goes, you know, this is before they had PowerPoint, so I just kind of put together some drawings, and it says, like, uh, <laughs> it's just written on the paper, like, somebody challenges somebody to a joust. And, like, joust is in, like, big letters with, like, little lightning <laughs> bolts around it. Visual is all hell. <laughs> <laughs> These are the notes. And he said, you know, I went around to a bunch of production companies, they all thought I was crazy. <laughs> But I went over to a Fry's Entertainment and uh, pitched it to my friend there, and uh, he went home, showed it to his son at night, uh, called me the next morning and said, uh, you know, Alan, uh, this is the biggest thing I've ever heard. I'm getting the movie. And that's how it was born. He got the money. Yeah. Incredible. It looks like you wrote these on, like, Taco Bell napkins. This is the, the, cr- the crudity <laughs> oh, yeah. of these sketches is just insane. <laughs> he also said that he was carrying a skateboard under his arm during yeah. the French meetings. The whole time, like, this is the future. <laughs> and like, he goes, he's like, you don't understand. There's this culture. They got a language. All the kids, they love it. Mm. Yeah, didn't he, like, the other producer's son, he, he told him about it, and the kid's like, oh, this is going to be huge. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. Had, you can actually blame that kid. That kid got a belt to the ass when this movie failed. <laughs> he kind of thinks that he started the skateboard craze with this movie, as he alludes to it. Yeah, like, he... a, like the Van Nuys Boulevard thing. Yeah. Because like... <laughs> he's like, you know, skateboarding was big and all, but it wasn't as big as after thrashing. It Bill really Sachs, took off yeah. from there. Yeah, basically, he says he says in the commentary, he goes, every kid on a skateboard has seen this movie. <laughs> I sure as hell didn't. <laughs> uh, all I right. read Thrasher, okay? Not Thrashin'. <laughs> the only other thing I'll say about him uh, before we get into the rest of the cast here is uh, some fun tidbits. The reunion special on this DVD is amazing. So, apparently, before they... Uh, recorded the commentary which Chris didn't listen to the commentary I just have a few notes from that that are pretty interesting there's three guys that show up so the guy who played Hook the guy who played Radley uh, they go and they're, they're talking for a while it's, it's nothing really that matters but the best part of the reunion is that this guy uh, Steve Olson who's a pro skater and was in the movie at the end of the reunion he just walks in he's like hey you sons of bitches and he's <laughs> He's holding a beer. <laughs> he walks into the studio holding a beer. <laughs> and then Radley gets up and gives him a hug. He's like, never lost touch with this guy. And then fade to black. <laughs> he doesn't say Because everyone before him got like a little like five minute <laughs> recap of their what's going on with their lives. This guy, hey, nothing. <laughs> Cut to black. <laughs> I mean, I think I was telling you that this segment, it wasn't much of a reunion as it was like running into your friends at like the supermarket <laughs> <laughs> this is like just three guys that probably live like 10 miles away from each other and you know <laughs> I know I can't even put I believe they've labeled it as reunion yeah cause the, the star sure, sure as hell isn't there no I don't think he'd have no. any interest no the craziest part is that they would even film that and then use yeah. it. They should have been like, you know what? Let's just leave this off. The director wanted to show off his nice Hollywood suit that he was so proud of. Well, it's the producer because they talk about the director oh, for a right. while. Yeah, the they producer, really, yes. not too many good feelings towards the director of this movie, believe it or not. Yeah. They're not big fans of his. Hmm. So let's get into the director of this movie. David Winters. David Winters is most famous for being a Broadway dancer on West Side Story. He played Baby John in the original production on Broadway. Uh, he was a very successful choreographer, teaching actors such as Ma- Anne Margaret and Raquel Welch, and he choreographed five Elvis movies. Oh, no kidding. He appeared in the West Side Story movie in 1961 as Arab. He directed and produced over 200 shows, specials, and movies. He has directed some TV movies and concert films before this movie. 
the one I liked the most was Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare, oh, 1975. Oh, hell yeah. David Winters made that. Kind of got his career started with a movie called The Last Horror Film, 1982. He wrote and directed it, did really well at Cannes, and he won some awards for it. Then he directed a couple low-budget things, Mission Kill, 1986, before going into Thrashing. Uh, he kept directing sci-fi and B-movies. He still works. Uh, last credit I have is 2015, Dancing It's On. Hmm. So he's a very successful producer, though. He did a ton of movies over 80 credits. Good for him. And big movies, too. Yeah. I mean, there were some real big ones in there. No Curse of the Crown for him, because this was not Crown. No. <laughs> it's MGM. Yeah. Um, Migum. So the reason that he picked, Alan Sachs picked David Winters, which he says <laughs> in the special, is amazing. Mm. He goes... You know, I picked David Winners because I thought, uh, you know, skateboarding's a lot like dancing. And that's that's the quote. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he also said, he goes, well, I was making a movie. I made Thrashing. It's kind of a Romeo and Juliet type story, you know. Uh, it's actually an exact ripoff of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I thought, uh, you know, West Side Story, David Winners, dancing, skateboarding, perfect match. Now, it's funny he says this, because when they get into the commentary, they have nothing but bad things to say about David Winters. In fact, there are multiple points that Alan Sachs hates in this movie, because David Winters got his way. So, about that... I I can see the Romeo and Juliet, in that a lot of people committed career suicide, in a way. Well, I think the biggest um, problem with this movie was that David Winters wanted somebody else to play the role of Hook. Mm-hmm. And Alan Sachs didn't cast him. And do you know who that was? Who? Johnny Depp. No. What? Oh, whoa. <laughs> so Johnny Depp was dating the lady who plays Velvet in this movie, Sherilyn Fenn. Uh, her boyfriend at the time was Johnny Depp, and he showed up to the cast with uh, the um, casting call with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he auditioned for the role of Hook, and Alan Sachs said no. And apparently David Winters wanted to cast him. And because of that, David Winters would never do another movie where he didn't have full control over oh, casting shit. and uh, creative decisions. You think this would have been a different film with Johnny Depp? Uh, I think it would have been a little bit more memorable. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think it would have... Uh, more people would know about it now. Although I think this is a very well-known movie relatively. I mean, I think a lot more people will know about this one than most of the movies we cover. Yeah. Uh, so we'll get a little bit more into the interesting stuff they have here. But let's, uh, let's go into the rest of the people who created this movie. Uh, Paul Brown, the co-writer, he's also in the special for the DVD. This was his first writing credit, uh, but he went on to write 11 episodes of Quantum Leap, two episodes of X-Files, five episodes of Pacific Blue, and an episode of Star Trek Voyager. He also wrote Camp Rock 1 and 2, <laughs> produced by Alan Sachs. Yep. He recently wrote, directed, and produced his own movie, 2011 Heaven's Rain. He's still working. He just wrote something called Mexicana, which is a TV series in 2015. Probably the most successful person outside of Josh Brolin in this movie, Catherine Hardwick, production designer. Yes. Began her career in motion pictures as a production designer on this movie. After becoming a film director herself, her second film would be the period skateboarding film Lords of Dogtown, 2005. That's a good one. Other credits of hers, 13, 2003. Twilight, 2008, Red Riding Hood, 2011, lots of TV, and her last credit is a movie called Stargirl, which is in pre-production. I think I know what to expect from that one, (laughs) given her latest track record. Yeah, she directed the first Twilight movie. Yeah. So let's get in the cast here. Yeah. Josh Brolin, who plays Corey, really needs no introduction. (laughs) Uh, I mean, if you don't know who Josh Brolin I mean, is, he doesn't even know to go. To, he doesn't even have to go to a reunion. I mean, no. Hell no, <laughs> not even in two thousand and three. Josh Brolin, and by the way, they talk about him nice in the commentary, but then towards the end, uh, the guy who played Radley just keeps screaming, "I'm Barbara Streisand's stepson." Blah 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 blah. <laughs> That does not bode well for so, No, there's a little bit of resentment. <laughs> <laughs> this was his second movie. Goonies was his first. After this movie, he kind of went mostly into TV, and then he had a really... His career took off around 94, tons of movies, and never stopped. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, if you don't know now, Academy Award nominations, wins, I mean... Guys, Men in Black 3! <laughs> okay, so Robert Russler, who plays Tommy Hook, also very successful, actually, relative uh, acting career. 1985, he started out with two episodes of Facts of Life. 
1985, he was in the movie Weird Science as a character called Max. Uh, he was also that same year, 1985, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. He played Rob Grady. That's why he's familiar. 1986, Dangerously Close. 1986, Vamp, before going into thrashing. Went on to be in lots of TV and movies, 54 credits. He was on General Hospital for a long time. He did recently did one episode of Ray Donovan. In 2016, he was in the movie Blood Feast. Oh, yeah. And 2016, The Unwilling. Still working. Pamela Gidley. Chrissy, the love interest in this mm-hmm. movie, Juliet, if you will, they found her because she was in some issues of Seventeen magazine, and she was like rated best looking girl or something. So they just said, "Eh, bring yeah, her in." Not better than you know the old crown out of Playboy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Playboy. Yeah. She's got them titums there. She can act. Get her in there. Get her in there. Crown takes people from Playboy. MGM takes people from Seventeen. So. <laughs> <laughs> 1986 Thrashed was her first role, then went on quite a bit more in 1988, The Blue Blue Iguana, before 1992 Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me, where she played Teresa Banks. Uh, She worked constantly in movies and TV, and she stopped working around 2006. Brooke McCarter, who plays Tyler, who is the blonde guy in this movie, and I never knew he even had a name, <laughs> and I, I don't reference yeah. him in my notes. <laughs> no, I, yeah, he's, he's he's background. He's like a glorified extra, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, pretty film. much, <laughs> even though he's supposed to be one of the main guys. I know. Uh, recently passed away, actually, in 2015. He was only 52. Oh, no. He had this disease I've never heard of, which is alpha-1 antracipin deficiency, which is a disease where the body does not make enough protein. So sad. That's horrible. But his credits, 1986, Thrashin, 1987, he was in the movie The Lost Boys. He played the character Paul. Yep. 2009 was his last credit I have here, uh, The Uh-Oh Show, directed by Herschel Gordon Lewis. I don't know. No <laughs> idea, but I'll check it out. Josh Richman, who plays Radley, who is also on the commentary track and on the, re- the quote, reunion. <laughs> Wait, on the DVD, did it say Thrash and quote reunion or just Thrash <laughs> I don't know. I think it, I hope it's a quote that been oh. like self-aware of how <laughs> I'm bad. so glad I own this DVD. Yeah. 1986, he was in a movie called River's Edge. He played Tony. 1986, Thrashin. 1994, Natural Born Killers. He played somebody called Sound Man. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't, wasn't the sound guy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 2005, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Played yeah. a character named Richie. Yeah. By the way, if you haven't seen it yet, Nice Guys, awesome movie. Shane Black. Great. Everything he makes. I, Everything. I, hey, I think you and I are, like we said before, you and I are the only people in the world that liked Iron Man 3. Oh, wait, I am like a diehard Shane Black fan. Yeah. I, I love Lethal Weapon. Yeah. I think it's one of the great, well, Lethal Weapon 1 is one of the best buddy cop movies ever made. Totally yeah. revitalized the entire genre. And Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, awesome movie. Nice Guys was awesome. Mm. I loved it. And the recent thing Shane Black's going to do is he is now making a sequel to Predator, yep. which he is writing and directing, which he refused to do a remake. He said, I will only do it if it's a sequel. And Joel Silver, hit the producer, who makes all his movies, as well as Predator and all those great movies, just said, let's do it. Love him. <laughs> so, Radley, they say 2007, he was in the movie The Education of Charlie Banks. He played Professor Gersten. 2008, he was in The House Bunny. He played Paramedic. <laughs> So, wow. I think he stopped having speaking roles after a while. But he did direct uh, the Guns N' Roses mo- uh, video, Live and Let Die. Uh, he is currently a club promoter, and he used to manage the Key Club on Sunset, where a band called Metal School used to play every Monday. And that band is now Steel Panther. Holy shit, everybody. <laughs> So back in like my college years, we would go and see Metal School on Mondays. Yeah. Uh, now that band is called Steel Panther, and they are like super famous, and they don't do cover songs. I don't think as much anymore because they have their own songs. Yeah. So, but yeah, he was one of the guys who started booking them, and um, I don't know if he still does it, but he's the manager of a band called Dead Sea. Oh, was that the shirt? Yeah, he was guy? wearing yeah, the shirt. I was, like, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Brett Marks, who plays Bozo, hated this movie. He hated having to be the dork because he was not that person in other roles, and he he just didn't like it. Because... What a flexible actor. <laughs> before this, 1976, Bad News Bears, Jimmy Feldman. Yeah. 1977, Bad News Bears and Breaking Training. 1978, Bad News Bears Go to Japan. 1986, Thrashing. 1987, he was in the movie Burglar with Whoopi Goldberg. 
where he played dental hygienist. Uh, and his last credit was 1995. He was on an episode of Party of Five where he played the character Hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on up, huh? Uh, actually, he went on to produce lots and lots and lots of music videos and commercials. Hmm. And he still does. So he actually has a very successful career, but he's not an actor anymore. Oh, well, that's cool. Good for him. Chuck McCann, who plays Mr. Flood in this movie, the owner of Smash Skates, probably has worked more than almost anybody except Josh Brolin, 153 credits. He's most well-known as Duckworth and the Beagle Brothers on DuckTales. No, that's awesome. (laughs) He did a ton of VO for cartoons. Yeah. He does tons and tons and tons of cartoons. That's incredible. We're talking Garfield, DuckTales, everything. Sherilyn Fenn, who plays Velvet, who was Johnny Depp's girlfriend at the time, has over 100 credits of acting. 1986, Thrashin. 1990, Twin Peaks. She's in every episode as Audrey Horn. Uh, 1990, in the movie Wild at Heart, another David Lynch movie. Uh, 1992, Of Mice and Men. 1993, Boxing Helena. 1998, Rude Awakening. And tons and tons and tons of TV and movies. Hmm. Her latest credits, 2014, Ray Donovan. She played a character named Donna Cochran for eight episodes. 2016, she was in a couple episodes of Shameless. Uh, She played a character named Queenie. 2017, she is coming back to Twin Peaks to revive her character in the the, new episodes. And 2017, she's in a movie called The Secrets of Emily Blair. That's all I have for the cast and crew. Everybody pretty much went on to do much more. Yeah. So... This movie, Good even though them. it was a bomb, yeah. uh, they all look back on it fondly, at least the people that talk in the <laughs> commentary and such, because oh, uh, they all had a really good time, I guess. So just before we start, a little bit of trivia. The dagger at the LA massacre that's lying on the ground that gets his leg broken, you remember that part? Yeah. That was real. No, really? That really broke his leg while they were filming, and they just filmed the paramedics as they came up and worked on him. <laughs> And just put it in the movie. Yeah, because my question is, how many injuries happen on set? And if they did happen, I would film the shit out of it. And yeah, just well, make they it part did. Of the movie. Yeah, there you go. Uh, lots of pro skaters in this movie, including Steve Caballero. Tony Alva plays one of the um, the daggers. Uh, Christian Hassoy as well. Chris Cook, Lance Mountain, Steve Olson, and a bunch more, including somebody else we'll get to in a little bit. And that's about it. Why don't we get into it? And then I'll, I'll throw in a little bit more of the uh, commentary facts as we go along here. So before we get into the movie, though, yes, let's take a listen to the trailer. Corey Webster is taking off for L.A. He lives to thrash. He loves to compete. But the competition is a killer. Check it out, it's hooking the dagger. You're gonna be the most beautiful girl at the club. The music of the Bangles. Animotion, Devo, Meatloaf, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Thrashing. Well, what do you thrash? God. You'd like to be held like that? Yeah, I'd love it. Look at us. Ain't it funny? Is it just begins? Well, maybe. There he is! Get him! It's just the game, right, Valley Boy? You like games, right, Valley Boy? An uphill romance. Of course, please don't go. To a downhill race. It's not a kid's game anymore. (laughs) 
it's not a kid's game anymore. <laughs> I do have to say before we start getting into this movie, this is like probably one of my favorite movies of all time. I, I just love every single second of this movie. I think I wouldn't change a frame. No. I think it's perfect. To <laughs> quote uh, John Rad. Yes, I'm going the John Rad <laughs> yeah. route. I think it's a perfect movie. <laughs> So we open on a shot of a downhill race. It seems like a dream. And people are yelling, Corey, Corey. And then the next thing we see, alarm clock, mm. 7.30 a.m. It's going off. Corey gets up. He gets ready. He sees, okay, I like this part. But, well, I'll get into it in a second. But, okay, so he sees some notes on his mirror while he's brushing his teeth. Yeah, okay. and I was hoping he was writing the, these notes to himself. No, like no, no, no. he was just, no. like, kind of hit his head too many times. and no. <laughs> <laughs> he's got CTE. <laughs> yeah, so he's reading these notes, uh, and they even make fun of this in the commentary as they're like, hey, Alan, where's his mom? Because they didn't cast a mom. <laughs> they were just like so cheap. They're like, yeah, we don't need a... So they just had... Uh, it's his mom that wrote these notes that apparently left them on his mirror, and they say, Corey, have a great time in LA. Good luck at the pool competition. Be careful at the LA downhill. I sent your duffel bag up to Tyler's. This $30 is for food, not beer. Love, mom. And there's 30 bucks tape below it. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, okay, well, Corey must be from, like, far away. Yeah. No. This is a thing that I can't stand in movies that they always do, is they always, especially in the 80s, try to pretend like if you're from the Valley, you are just so far from L.A., it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. However, if you've ever been to L.A. or live in L.A., like we have our entire lives, the valley is, depending on where you are in the valley, 20, 30 minutes mm. from the rest of Los Angeles. They make it seem like you know, California to like Denver <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. Have a good time in L.A. I mean, down the street. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I was like, wait a second. Why does he even have to go stay there for the summer? Can't he just go for the day and come back home and then go back? Right. It's not that far. Right. I mean, even even if he wasn't driving, he could have just taken a bus. I mean, it's really not that far. I used to travel further with my skateboard as a kid. <laughs> as did I. I would take the bus. It was like two bucks. We'd get on the bus. We'd go 30 miles up the road, and that's it. Mm hmm but apparently the valley is so fucking far from the rest of LA and we will keep get hitting this over and over in the movie that you might as well be living on another planet yeah and I did say it was having the notes on the mirror though is a great way to get rid of unwanted exposition yes <laughs> you're just like yeah just fucking do it he's you know slob, let's get it he's unkempt I do have to say for the most part this movie moves really well yeah the pacing is fine yeah everything except fine. for certain parts and We'll get into that, and Alan is, uh, yeah. he has some comments about yeah, that. I know what you're saying. I'm not going to ruin it. So he gets dressed while the amazing theme song plays. And you know this theme song, Chris? The thrashing theme song mm -hmm. that's playing right now? Mm -hmm. You know who sings this song? I want to say, well, it's, to me, I want it to be John Farno. It's Meatloaf. No! <laughs> cool! It's Meatloaf, and the song, written by Alan Sachs. All right. <laughs> so he's got like... And in the commentary... Hook and Radley make fun of this song so bad. <laughs> and they're like, great song, Alan. You couldn't have, could have, couldn't have come up with anything better. <laughs> and they're like singing the words and making fun of him. He's like, come on, man. It's a hot song. It's a hot song. <laughs> Josh Brolin leaves his house. Oh, if you don't know, Corey is Josh Brolin. So he leaves the house and he jumps through. Uh, well, he goes off his roof on this ramp. So they got to throw in a trick. And by the way, they said every stunt, they'd pay the guy 25 bucks. 25 bucks a try. <laughs> a try. <laughs> so Corey skates around town. And I wrote, is he already in L.A.? Because it kind of looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> looks like he's in Redondo Beach or something. <laughs> um, so he leaps into the back of a car like in the middle of nowhere, it looks yeah, like like some canyon road. Well, I guess maybe he's going over the hill. So mm -hmm. I guess going through either one of the canyons, I guess. But it acts like he's going so far and he has to hitchhike and all this. And he gets to the back of that car. And then the next thing he's in, he's at his friend's house. And it's still morning. 
Yeah. Of course, because it's only a goddamn 20 minute, 30 minute drive. <laughs> and I, he, I guess he skates most of the way there because we just see him skating around for a long time. So he's at his friend's house now, who I don't even know whose house it is. Because, and there, by the way, not one parent in this whole movie, Mm-mm. which I thought was it's a little kids. weird. It's, it's, it's very like suburbia. But with and also, well, we'll get into it once we get to the daggers. But I wonder how old some of these people actually are. So he arrives at his friend's house. Don't know whose friend it is, but apparently Corey's going to live in this RV in the back of his house for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they didn't even have a room for him. So they're like, hey, you get your own house back here. It's this RV. You know, you probably could go home, Corey. It is only 20 minutes, but you insist <laughs> on staying here. So. so he goes, oh, you got to go check out my new ramp. So they go over and they check out this ramp. And I wrote in my notes, this is the most 80s group of kids I've ever seen yep. in a movie. I wrote what they're they're wearing. One guy, no shirt on and a fedora. That's, this is Rad, yeah. Radley. My favorite. <laughs> I can't stand him. <laughs> By the way, in the special features on the reunion, Radley still shows up in a fedora. So never changed. No, I think it's the same fedora. <laughs> Then we have Bozo. Then there's some child yeah. <laughs> hangs around him, the little token Stevie. Child. Again, suburbia. Uh, and I put the other guy, the blonde guy, is nondescript. <laughs> That's all I have. He's just wearing neon and stuff. So apparently at this point in the commentary, they said that Alan wouldn't let any of the ramp locals, which is their name, mm-hmm. wear any black. Yeah, they they all had to wear neon colors. Very vibrant, very to contrast with the daggers. Yeah, because they're assume. supposed to be the dorks. Yeah. Uh, and I like this part. So one of them says something about christening a virgin ramp, uh, and they all fight on who's going to ride it. We only know, we know who's going to ride it. The only guy who knows how to skate, Corey. Yeah, I and mean, <laughs> we kill a good two minutes deciding who is going to go on this ramp. It's like, no, you go. You no, go. You go. Oh, I'll go. No, you go. Oh, oh, all right, you go. go for it. Yeah. Go for it. And then, of course, oh, God. two minutes later, yeah. So Josh Brolin rides this ramp uh, while Devo starts playing. And then all of a sudden, dozens of people are now in this backyard. Yeah, like they miraculously appear in the next cut, like in the next frame, out of nowhere. <laughs> I just wrote, this is just breaking with skateboards. Yeah. Because in that movie, it was just like they'd start dancing and clapping their hands. And then all of a sudden, like a group of people would yeah. show up. And if you've never seen Break It 2, by the way, in one of those groups of people that show up, that's John claude Van Damme's first role. Yeah. He's just a guy looking at break dancing in that movie. <laughs> so we freeze frame. Okay, I love this. So we, <laughs> there's some skating, and then it freeze frames on these two guys doing the tricks, and it says, directed by David Winters. <laughs> yeah, so that's, we, it feels like a, like a good 10 minutes has passed since the last opening credit. <laughs> but we need to slide this one in because we need to glorify the man who made this. I'm sure it pissed off Alan, too. Oh, yeah. So next thing, they're in a car driving down the street and they're singing tequila. The fedora guy, Radley, he's the real jokester. And he's also the real horny guy. He's the Crispin Glover in this movie. <laughs> Which I think we're just going to classify as any of the horny characters from now on are just called the Crispin. <laughs> so we see these girls walk by in very 80s swimsuits. And I wrote, this guy goes insane. He gets out and here's the, qu- here's the quotes he says. Oh God, 12 o'clock high. Tasty skate Betty's boy. And I wrote, you cannot understand this. I had to turn on subtitles, and I never even knew the word skate Betty's existed. Nope. Oh, God, Tyler, look, fellas, look. 12 o'clock high, tasty skate Betty's boy. <laughs> oh, God, I love California. I like this, though. They walk across the street, right? Like the yeah. girls in the swimsuit walk across the street, and he goes, hey, baby, hey, I love you. You know that, right? I'm classy. I swear. I know him. And he points to Josh Brolin. <laughs> and I wrote, they don't even look at them. Not once. Do you think this was like that Van Nuys Boulevard thing where they just go out with a camera and just film people and like they, <laughs> they have don't... people yell like Josh, like he's like, hey, yo, sweetheart. And they just film around and people. It, it like feels like it. Yeah. Because if you look, they the girls don't even turn. No. Like Radley yells all this stuff at them. Not even, yeah. not even like a, a shoulder nod. Nothing. Yeah. I wish you would yell something like, get off the half pipe, you can't handle it. <laughs> oh, that would have that been amazing. <laughs> so Hook and the Daggers make their first appearance. They come skating down this hill in a flying V formation, which I loved, uh, and Hook's in the front. And I wrote, at this point, he's dressed like Rob Halford from Judas Priest. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> he's got a little leather hat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh He's got a little leather hat on, uh, like almost like a yarmulke, <laughs> and this leather vest. And he's looking real done up, nice in his makeup. 
uh, and his his perfectly ripped jeans. You know if like they were trying to argue back and forth if they were going to put a whip on his belt. <laughs> Like this is where you could tell David Winters yeah. was definitely involved in West Side Story because this just might as well be a gang from West Side Story. They look so gang. like yes, they look like a musical. Oh, this gang no. would intimidate nobody. <laughs> and we'll get on to as the movie goes on, it gets even crazier. Like this is not a gang at all. No, it's not. They were that was like they were gonna walk and like kind of snap in unison like. Yeah. <laughs> they might as well have started snapping when he's rolling down the street. <laughs> they come skating down in their flying V, and here's somebody says, I heard he's a killer. I heard, and then somebody cuts him off. Uh, and then they go, Oh, look, there's Monk, who's their friend who's now become a, a dagger, which I don't know if you caught that. It took me like yeah. until now to basically yeah. realize one of their friends was there. Oh, Radley goes, I knew him when his name was Ralph, and he lived in the valley, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, they're trying so hard to like make two kinds of turfs, <laughs> and just these, just the the uh, ramp locals. Well, okay, the rivalry is just hilarious. The exposition for this is just ramming speed. <laughs> two gay gangs fight each other. <laughs> I'm not trying to be homophobic no, or anything. I'm just I. saying they look it's, very homosexual. This is what I was thinking. <laughs> they know what I thought. That's that's why I said it looked gay because of the Arrested Development episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's exactly the, the like cops show up. <laughs> so, and what was the name of that? The group he uh, he forms in the rest of development. The uh, oh god, I forget. I have to look at our. We'll come back to it. <laughs> One of the, either the jets or the sharks show up on skateboards, <laughs> and they start. So the ramp locals have parked their car and for some reason aren't moving it now. And then the daggers start doing tricks all over the car, and I really like that. I put their real hooligans at yeah. this point. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the we follow the daggers now. So we've left the ramp locals, and they start they skate around this corner. And then Hook stops when he sees this truck, and he pauses. And then he just does some weird flip off the side of it. And I wrote, "This is the era of skateboarding when the trick was off the board and when you landed." Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> This is the era of skateboarding when the main part of the trick was done without your board. Yeah. (laughs) I think you and I made a short film that made fun of things like this. Yeah. And here it is actually being done in a film to be serious. Like the trick he does at this point is he looks at this truck. (laughs) Does the Charleston. He he skates up to the truck, (laughs) jumps off the board, puts his feet on the truck, and does like a backflip and then lands on the board. (laughs) So again, that's the trick. Again, West Side Story. <laughs> There's no reason for this other no. than, you know. <laughs> Skating's dancing, you know. <laughs> this, so. Everything's a fucking dance move in this movie. So Hook and the Daggers, they skate down near the beach and they just start running into people. I like that. So they're near Venice now. And this is, this is one of Chris's favorite parts of this whole movie, I know. Because we're talking about this. They pull up to these guys break dancing, Chris. <laughs> Tell me what happened. So, the daggers are watching this guy. He's a street performer, and this guy is just spinning his head, going really, really, really fast. It's really impressive. The crowd's going nuts. Yeah, they have like a break dance set up, like a <laughs> yeah. like a. It's not even a piece of cardboard. They got like a full dance floor. Yeah, and their boombox set up. Yeah, the music's going. So the daggers show up. The music's going. He's this break dancer's just breaking like all hell. The crowd's going nuts. He gets up, and then there's a little little standoff occurs, <laughs> and. Hook does some moves, yeah, you know, joking around. You know, I wish. <laughs> but they just stop, and the breakdancer just kind of stares at him. Like, I thought they were going to kiss. <laughs> I mean, they were going really close. Like, I mean, cool, man. Go for it. I mean, if it feels good, do it. But it would have been really out of context of the scene. That's just me. But all of a sudden, he kind of backs away, and um, Hook just stands there, and he goes, breaking just a memory. <laughs> and then breakdance boy just kind of backs away kind of doesn't want to admit that he's been defeated in his body language and then they all kind of disperse well and then Christian Asoy the other guy goes for wimps yeah <laughs> like that's <laughs> um, <laughs> and then as they disperse they kind of nonchalantly like kick over his boombox and just walk away <laughs> I love that part and I wrote they're real jerks yeah <laughs> breaking is a memory <laughs> 
Okay, so then we go to more skate tricks, and I wrote, I guess at this point, just writing off anything was considered cool. And, like, this is what I would do when, like, I didn't know how to do anything. Yeah. Like, okay. This so. is, like, nowadays, this is how you, like, learn how. Yeah. <laughs> so the skate tricks that we watch in slow motion in this part are... People just riding off a ledge, like yeah. maybe three feet off the ground, mm. and they just ride the board off it and land. No tricks, no ollie, nothing. They just ride off I it. I mean, to be fair, though, back then, these boards are pretty big. These are like yeah, big-ass yeah, yeah. boards. So you can't do the kinds of kick flips and varials of whatnot no, that no, you but can nowadays, do today. But back then, you can still do some stuff. Though. Nowadays, watching it is pretty funny, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is when I wrote, the fedora guy bugs me. <laughs> when do they not? <laughs> Riley keeps saying these lines. Yeah. And he has this way. He's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. like, I'll play some now, but he's he's insufferable. I can't stand yeah. this fucking guy. That's, and that's why I love him. <laughs> Wild man. Acid rock. Gnarly. So they all like go and they look at these tricks. The ramp locals are there now. Uh, and then Bozo can't even climb over the fence. He's so dorky. He like it, the way he climbs over the fence is like somebody threw a sack of potatoes over a fence, you yeah. know, and just kind of gets stuck. <laughs> yeah. uh, so they all, all of a sudden, the ramp locals start riding their boards into some big ruffian party by the beach uh, with all these daggers. And I wrote, "There's a ramp and a bunch of troubled teens at this point." Wayward teens on yeah. the ramp. <laughs> so Corey, uh, Josh Brolin, he rides in uh, with the blonde guy. Uh, I still forgot his name. And blind guy stopped and he goes, I don't think we should be here, man. This is the Daggers place. And Corey goes, Daggers, huh? And he skates up to this ramp they got in the corner and he does a trick and Hook's sitting there with some girl and he's not happy about it. And then one dagger says, beat it, you Val jerk. And Corey, he goes for the ramp again. And I, I like that part when some guy tries to stop him. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, goes to the ramp. <laughs> he and tries he, to push him out. <laughs> and he's like, like a, the most non-struggle ever. <laughs> and then somehow, Corey, even though he's like five feet from the ramp, gets about, uh, I guess, triple the speed that he's at yeah. currently and jumps all the way over this wall. I mean, he's got calf muscles the size of a bull. <laughs> uh, and I put, Hook is none too pleased about any of this, but he does nothing. He just watches from his little uh, king chair. Mm-hmm. And Hook's the leader of the daggers, by the way. Yeah. I don't know if we've mentioned that. I keep wanting to call the daggers the scars. The so scars. stop me. <laughs> oh, you know, they really are. <laughs> well, there there are a few Savage Streets um, <laughs> moments, and I'll see parallels in here. Well, just from the wardrobe of the daggers alone, is is very Savage Streets and very Halford. So. Yeah. So then... Corey takes a break at, with about a hundred other people. I've never seen so many people in my life at Venice, by the way. This is insane, the amount of people that are all crowded around watching skating. As they watch this guy do skate tricks. And then while Corey's standing there, he spots this girl. He goes over and they have a little moment. But they watch this guy. He keeps doing tricks. Uh, I don't know the guy's name, but they did say he is the owner of World Industries, this guy. That's in this part. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, so Hook's girl comes over her name is velvet we haven't figured that out and she grabs this girl that Corey's looking at and she goes come on chrissy let's go and chrissy goes check out this guy's stuff and then he does a trick and they look at him but this is one of my favorite parts in the whole movie is velvet looks over at the guy doing the tricks she shakes her head and she goes freestyle yeah <laughs> she's bored with it <laughs> <laughs> freestyle come on you have to wonder, like, what kind of uh, demographic sample and how many people they interviewed to determine. So, uh, kid, what is your opinion? Is freestyle is a boring, cool... Freestyle is not skating. It's not skating at all. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, he's doing more tricks than anybody else. Yeah. This is the most impressive skating in the he's whole movie. He's pogoing, he's spinning, he's flipping. <laughs> I'm entertained. Freestyle. <laughs> so then Chrissy, she wants to stay, but... Velvet drags her along because she goes, your brother's waiting. And I wrote, waiting for what? But then we find out. (laughs) So this is amazing. Again, Broadway. Chrissy and Velvet walk over because they really needed Chrissy because apparently the Daggers are taking their annual photo. A group photo. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. They're taking their yearbook photo. I almost died just now. (laughs) 
<laughs> so everybody <laughs> in the daggers the yearly production photo <laughs> of, of yeah. daggers this is their sponsorship photo for the year or something like their little leak photo <laughs> every one of the daggers is lined up in front of the ramp and like they've all gathered in this big like there's people above people. They're wearing it's their very be- choreographed. They're wearing their best leather for the yeah. day. <laughs> oh yeah, so, they have this amazing choreographed uh, picture going on, and I guess they really did need Chrissy to complain it because they were like, "Where is she? Wait, wait, <laughs> yeah. we sp- come on, bring her over here." It took us like twenty minutes to yeah. set this up. <laughs> so she comes over. Uh, I wrote oh I wrote in my notes I said it would have been great to see what happened before this. <laughs> <laughs> like if Hook was directing, we'd be like, No, no, you stand there. Okay, yeah. let's get let's get a little more integration. Girls guy, girl guy, come on. All right, no, you can't be the tallest guy standing in the front. You gotta go in the back. Come on. You got you know, guys, we take a lot of time. I hired this photographer, he came down for the day. Yeah, he has three more soccer teams after this. Let's make it worth this time, all right? <laughs> so so they set up this picture and they they're all like, "All right, everybody smile." <laughs> uh, they take their nice group photo. Dagger's company photo 86. <laughs> we find out that Hook's real name is uh Tommy and that Chrissy is just his quote brat sister visiting from Indiana. And here's the thing. I thought they were dating. Like oh, you did. Portion. Yeah, because when they're in the mirror looking at him, like he's putting on his earring, and she's oh, like, "Oh yeah." I thought they were like together. I thought they had just woken up together. <laughs> no, it's a sister. Yeah, what a real Star Wars, Luke and Leia. So, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to that scene, this scene ends with they do. Hook makes everybody cheer daggers as they take a picture. <laughs> He goes, all right, everybody, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Daggers! <laughs> and I wrote, this is a real tender moment. Yeah, it is. Good. One more. Yeah! Daggers! Yeah! You think every gang has their group photo? I would only You think hope. the Bloods and the Crips every year, they send each other Christmas cards yeah. with their group photos on yeah. them? Red stockings, blue stockings. So, okay, we cut back to the ramp locals in their car, which the only car they ride around is Bozo's car. Uh, and they're like, oh, it's really hot in here, man. How come you don't have any AC? And he goes, my dad said not to get it. And I was like, well, that's just fucking dumb. Yeah. Who, get, who gets a new car without AC? In LA in the summer? I didn't even know they made new cars without AC, even in 86. Yeah. I didn't know that was an option. Apparently, it's a luxury back then. <laughs> I guess to get heat, that's a necessity. That's usually when you rent a house but yeah and I wrote in this world he's obviously only their friend because he's the only one with a car yeah and he goes oh it wouldn't have been a problem if my dad let me get that car I really wanted which was a ragtop convertible and I wrote the blossom guy with the fedora because I didn't know his <laughs> name blossom guy point, my own block <laughs> yeah so blossom says uh, do you really want a convertible cut to fedora guy Radley with a blowtorch and a mask cutting the top off the car <laughs> And I just wrote, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and Bozo says, my brand new car, my father is going to murder me. And I wrote, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Bro, <let> me hope. <laughs> so they cut the top off this car and they remove it. And now he has a convertible, I guess. And then they make it worse because they decide <laughs> to paint it. <laughs> not like a cool flat black or like not even van yellow. No, it's like graffitied. Yeah, it's like it's like very electric boogaloo graffiti. Yeah. Okay. So about this. Yeah. Alan says during the production that he actually had his car repoed, and he said, "Yeah, it was a sub, and when they took it, it was a real sub story." Whoa. But he said after the movie, he actually drove around in this car for a little bit. How it was, with the top off and painted. Hey, so you guys are done with this movie. I need a car. And look at this. You guys have a car. Is it cool if I drive around there? Yeah, no problem. I just see him peeling it out a lot after they wrap in that thing. Like it's his own little trophy. I want to know what happened to that car if he still like. I think he said he sold it or something like that. As is. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Top off it. <laughs> this was in the movie Thrash, and you ever seen it, kid? I no. S- I can just see him, like doing the golden circle around it, like pointing out every like detail. And this, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Listen to that, the good smack. Yeah. You, you know, Johnny Depp tried out for this movie. I told him he wasn't good enough. 
<laughs> you could have been in this car. You want to be that Johnny Depp in this car? <laughs> His girlfriend touched it. Uh, so then we cut to the Dagger's house, which, before we get to this, so the Daggers are supposed to live in Venice, right? Mm. Well, this house was actually a crack house in the middle of Hollywood. It looked like it. That they took over <laughs> the production. Uh, and it was since condemned and is now an apartment building. No, interesting. Because watching this, I'm like, you know what? I feel like I've played there before. I'm like some tour like ten years ago. <laughs> like, hey, you know, I'd probably sleep in that area. There, <laughs> it was very familiar. I felt very comfortable watching this house. It does look like one of those, like a black house or something like that. You know what I mean? What do you mean black house? Like in Olympia, they have those black houses where all those punk kids live in and stuff. Oh, I thought you meant like. Oh no no oh, no, no, no no no! All right, I'm cutting that out. I'm cutting that out. No, it definitely looks like one of those uh, punk houses. Yeah. Yeah, like you'd play the show in or... Yeah, slept in many times. We go to the Dagger's home, which they've outfitted with ramps all over it, and they've painted a bunch of Dagger logos everywhere and graffitied the hell out of it, because everything needs to look like a trash can in this movie with neon coloring all over it. Yeah, but it looks like a squatter's house. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You get really cool vegan meals, maybe some pasta. Yeah. (laughs) So we got inside the house, and it's even worse. I wrote, the inside of Hook's room is painted like a bad nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> it's like really neon. In the bathroom, there's, there's some guy wanting to wash your hands for you. Like, give you like, like a little towel and you tip him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's like really bad murals on the wall yeah. and everything. And a little dagger logos everywhere. <laughs> and there were, no, I'm, I'm sorry. There were like daggers all over the place. It's like almost like the Riddler's like layer oh, or something they, like the logo of whatever you are. It's like sprinkled throughout. Well, the production designer did go on to do a lot, but man, she worked her ass off in this movie yeah. because everything looks crazy, like mm. so detailed it's almost sickening. <laughs> like, they just needed to stop at some yeah. point. Like, how about we work the story a little bit more and less on the fucking design of this house? <laughs> And I wrote, okay, so at this point we know two things. Is that Hook is very protective of his sister, but is even more protective of his hair. Yeah. (laughs) And I wrote, even though he wears that tiny leather leather hat. (laughs) Because we see this shot, like, Hook is, like, fixing his hair, even though it's already combed in this mirror for, like, a good five minutes while Chrissy talks to him. And she says, I like those skaters and those break dancers. And he goes, breakers? But then immediately goes into, what do you think? Should I wear this... This skull and the dagger, or this hoop and the dagger, and he's talking. He's asking her what earring he should wear. <laughs> I wrote, he is very punk rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what uh, what uh, earring do you think I should wear today? You know, what a studded necklace should I wear? What uh, what gauntlet needs to go through the face today in the pit? You know, Chrissy, your brother. It's me. I'm in a gang, and I want to intimidate people. What earring do you think will be most intimidating? Because the grandmothers don't like the skull none too much. The kids like it, but I want to scare both. And she goes, no, just wear the dagger (laughs) and a bone through your nose. And he doesn't think that's funny at at all. all. And he goes, I love this part. He goes, don't be a smart ass. This is important to me. (laughs) (laughs) Because he's going to the mall to hang out in front of the Hot Topic. Oh, God. Like I said, all those little perfectly ripped holes in the jeans and everything. Yeah. You know? Real West Side Story gang here. Uh, we cut back to Bozo. He's in his car as uh, Corey's getting ready in this RV. He's also staring in the mirror for a while. <laughs> this gang is the most vain gang I've ever encountered in any Both of them. them. Both like, of them. You wonder how many mirrors are in this house. Like, how many times they walk by and kind of, like, tossle their hair and, like, kind of do the whip. <laughs> But like kind of put it back in place and their hair always looks the same by the way this yeah. never <laughs> yeah. it never changes or looks any different no yeah bozos he's honking outside he's like come on hur- Corey, hurry or you'll miss the girls Corey's like he's looking in this mirror and he's got like a trucker hat on and a jacket it, well he's got these glasses he looks like steven spielberg <laughs> <laughs> i wrote these skate kids really care about their looks yeah which uh nobody i knew was like this no <laughs> Wake up, throw on some pants, <laughs> smell the shorts. If they're good, you wear them. If not, you still wear them. Cool. Yeah, back when I was a little kid, I would go ask my mom. I'm like, Mom, what uh, fake earring should I put in my ear today? 
I want to look real hardcore. <laughs> Uh, so all these kids, they're in the back of this uh, car. Uh, they pile in the back of the car, which, okay, so they've cut the top of this car out. Yeah. And then instead of sitting in the seats like humans, <laughs> they, like, sit on the trunk. And I wrote, probably one of them is going to fall out and die yeah. at some point. Yeah. But for some reason, they kick little Stevie out of the car because they're like, you're too young. And he goes, I hope you don't get laid as they roll out. <laughs> Later, losers. <laughs> the best things i've ever seen <laughs> now you gotta say it one time years ago years ago when chris and i were still in high school we we've known each other for a long time we were at this taqueria at probably like midnight or something you know one of the few 24-hour taquerias around town where we grew up and i'm just standing outside the taqueria chris is like all right i'll see you later so yeah i'm standing there with some, a bunch of friends and then chris <laughs> All of a sudden, we hear this car speed up in the parking lot, and it it's comes to a complete stop in front of me, my friends, all these people, all random people stand out there. And Chris just rolls down his window, and he goes, see you later, losers, and then just peels out in the parking lot. <laughs> and so many of the other people there, the random people, were just like, what the hell was that? Was there somebody know that guy? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that part of the story. I just, in fact, I barely remember doing that until you told me. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I did that. <laughs> of the many things I've done, that is one of the things I don't recall very well. But you were uh, in rare form that night. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't even drinking. I don't even know. No. We go to the skate party or the club, right? And uh, this is the part with um, a famous band in it. So everyone's dancing around. So okay, so they go to this club, which looks like uh, like a club in L.A. I guess, like one of those. Uh, yeah. Although I've never seen one where kids are skateboarding in the middle of a club. So <laughs> there's a bunch of kids like skating, doing their freestyle tricks, their pogos on the dance floor, and then we watch the ramp locos. They all try to get in the club, <laughs> and the bouncer stops Radley, and he has just like. I guess at some point Radley had went to a hotel and just cleaned out the mini bar because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he has like dozens of dollar bottles of <laughs> like alcohol just strewn around his clothes. He's got them everywhere, like every pocket, every little crevice. Under you know? his fedora. We now have a reason to wear the fedora is yeah. to put his alcohol. Like that's the whole reason. Which he almost gets in, and then the bouncer goes, huh? And then takes yeah. his fedora off, and the the bottles just roll off his head into his yeah. hand. And even now, in real in reality, you you wouldn't get in if you were trying to sneak all that shit in there. Like, no, that's why he <laughs> still lets him in. Yeah, I didn't get that. I remember uh, I have a friend who tried to get into one of the big punk clubs that's still around in Orange County uh with a fake ID, mm. and we were going to see this show, and we were real excited, and we get up there, and like he gives him the ID and the guy just immediately goes, no, he can't get in <laughs> and took his ID. And we we're like, what the fuck? Like what happened? And he's like, Oh shit. I used my fake ID and all this. It ended up the picture was on the wrong side. Oh, but they wouldn't, wouldn't let him get in. I spe- no, there's no way. I've never yeah. seen it where if you try to bring in alcohol, they'd be like, yeah, still go in. It's like if he, they had it in the scene where he tried to bring in a gun, he's like, hey, and I know when I this time, but hey, go for it, buddy. We'll hold on to this. Well, it's like at Disneyland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to do the old stop and frisk. But <laughs> Chris had a tent at Disneyland, the uh, stop and frisk tent. If you ever got caught with anything, he would uh, be there with his rubber gloves on. Actually, we weren't allowed to wear gloves. It was a bad show. Oh. Bad show to wear gloves because it made us look like they were the dirty ones. <laughs> <laughs> so they try and they get in this club. Yeah, and the bouncer says to him, he goes, what are you trying to do, start a bar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he says, take a hike, but still lets him in. Yeah, like take a hike, but take the hike in our venue, which you're trying to sink tons of illegal shit into. <laughs> so if Radley wasn't annoying enough with his goddamn fedora and his attitude... They immediately walk into the club, and he puts down his skateboard, and it runs into everybody else who's skateboarding on the floor, mm. and just fall. Everybody falls over, and I'm like, I just wrote this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so they're hanging out, and then Chris, Chrissy, uh, Hook, and the Dagger show up, and I wrote, she is very overdressed because everybody is in their punk clothes except Chrissy is for some reason in like a prom dress. Yeah, I don't know why she's dressed like this. Like. <laughs> 
I guess they need to make her stand out as like the Juliet of the family. You know, this is the, where the Romeo and Juliet. She's from Indiana. She's in the one. What she's doing. And they keep, by the way, in the commentary, they keep talking about how she has not... Her accent is not Indiana at all. No. Sounds more like she's from uh, the East Coast or something. Plains, Georgia. Some guy in a suit, he walks up on the stage, right, Mm -hmm. in this club, and he introduces the next band, which is the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And it is the Red Hot Chili Peppers, really, before they were ultra famous. Yeah, the original lineup, actually. So in the commentary and the other stuff, Alan (laughs) Sachs talks about how... He loves the peppers, as he calls them. Uh, and he says, you know, we shot this scene and Anthony and Flea, they were singing for hours. Hours when we shot this scene. Uh, and we loved it. Love my peppers. And then afterwards, we were out and we were test screening it. And the audience, loving the movie, loving the movie. And then all of a sudden, the peppers come on the screen and uh, all the votes went down. <laughs> And the production company, he comes over, he goes, you got to take him out. And he's like, oh, you got to let me have my peppers. <laughs> and it's a good thing they left him in because that's probably one of the only reasons that people still dig up this movie is for Josh Brolin and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Uh, and this is back when they were, if you've never seen like the original Red Hot Chili Peppers where they were dressing up in all sorts of weird outfits and playing, I guess you would call it punk music for the time. It was like punk funk punk funk <laughs> yeah dance yeah that's a good description Weird. so then Bozy's walking around he's carrying this bunch of drinks he gets hit by this flying skateboard that this guy in the suit throws in the crowd drops the drinks everywhere oh real clumsy and while they're playing Corey he tries to get across the room to Chrissy but all of a sudden like people just keep stopping him for some reason and he keeps going up against other random girls in the crowd and they all give him a look and he's like <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. There's all these girls that give him a look. I go, oh, hey, how you doing? And he's like, you're not Chrissy. So he finally makes it to her and they go outside. And so before we get into the rest of the scene, because this this next scene is amazing. Apparently after they wrapped this party, some guy uh, from the movie named Jay showed up afterwards without a shirt on and a steak knife threatening to kill people. Huh. I would, wow, I would have been long gone after that happened. <laughs> but he sure wasn't like a disgruntled PA. <laughs> Like, no, I think God he said it was in the movie. Guy. <laughs> he said he was really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and he showed up with a steak knife, and he's like, I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it going to be? <laughs> uh, so we walk outside, and Corey and Chrissy, they're talking to each other. And she goes, this kid's are crazy back in there. Back at home in Indiana, you don't see that kind of stuff. Just frat parties and homecoming dances. And he goes, they're thrashers. They're all right. <laughs> she goes... Thrashers. Sounds kind of like vandals or juvenile delinquents. Troubled youth. <laughs> this dialogue, by the way. Yeah. But this next part, probably the best lines in the movie. No. This is where he goes, no, no. Thrashing, man. It's just an aggressive style of skating. You know, we thrash. She goes, well, what do you thrash? And what's he say, Chris? What do you got? <laughs> Thrashing. It's just an, an aggressive style of skating. I mean, we, we thrash. Well, what do you thrash? What do you got? Uh, then they go on for a while, and she asks, or he goes, why do you hang out with those clones? And she's all, oh, do you know Hook? And he's like, yeah, that punk poser. <laughs> and she goes, oh, yeah, he's my brother. And he's like, oh, I'm such an idiot. You probably hate me. And <laughs> she's like, no, you're all right. This is our first meeting of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, so he tries to get her to skateboard. And she's like, oh, it's so dangerous. And he's like, no, 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 just get you, get get on it there. And he, he gets her on the board, and then she does some trick. Yeah. Like she's been, she's a fucking natural. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know why they wrote that into the story. It should have been funny if, like, she fell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would have been great if she messed up her dress. She's yeah. all mad about they it. Like, rips or something. And he's like, oh, I'm a gentleman. I can't look away. <laughs> I just wrote the whole, this whole scene, the, the dialogue is just all incredible. Mm. Like, you, you have to do yourself a favor and watch it. I, I've been sp- uh, interspersing the lines in here, but the performances are amazing. This is definitely before Josh Brolin was uh, Academy Award worthy. Yeah, he was still finding himself, you could say. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, so they talk about how he's going to do this downhill race, the L.A. Massacre. And she's like, oh, my brother's going to do that, too. And there we find out there's a thousand dollar prize. So big money. Then we go on. Another one of my favorite parts is the Corey and Chrissy date montage. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This music starts up, and I write, they go to a fair? Yeah, it's just like a boardwalk or something? Like Santa Monica Pier? What's going on here? I don't know. It just looks like they're in the middle of farmland at this fair. And by the way, so they're at the venue, I'd assume around 10 at night. Yeah. Well, the pep- the chili peppers are on, so it's probably more like headline- 11. Yeah, I'm assuming they're headlining, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, maybe midnight or later. Yeah, they're sure it's all not opening <laughs> for the Bouncing Souls. I'm telling you this much. <laughs> but they, they go to the open fair, I guess, at yeah. this time, and they're hanging out in the bounce house. They're trying to buy a hot dog. It keeps cutting to this bounce house over and over. This bounce house. <laughs> Well, I love this little, like, five-second scene of them where they just slam into each other and just kind of collapse, <laughs> like, <"Hoo!" laughs> And it's the same with the, um, like, the shot where it looks like it's a dream. Like, yeah. For some reason, they have this really fish-eyed lens, and they just show this bounce house over and over, and mm-hmm. then, yeah, jumping into each other. So then they go around L.A., and they go to Wacko. Yeah. Which is one of our favorite stories love of L.A. Love uh, it. And it's funny, because I think last time we were there... All together, I was like, you know, this will make a good date spot. And sure enough, <laughs> someone already beat me to it. I can't believe Wacko is that old of a store. Yeah. I had no idea it was around yeah. in the 80s. If you don't know what Wacko is, it's this really cool store in L.A. That's also by the best Goodwill I've ever been in, by the way. It's <laughs> a <laughs> shirt that you can find in there. I've found some really weird ones. Uh, but Wacko is like a art gallery slash joke store slash novelty shop. Oh, they got some good books there, too. It's awesome. Just yeah. go in there if you're ever around LA. Uh, yeah, Corey does a flip off the wall. He's she's all really impressed by it, and then they kiss for a while. And then did you notice this part? They walk past the store window, and the words "casual sex" written on it. And then she like pulls him, and he looks real somber. Like, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> like what is this about? <laughs> like. Not good etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's easy. Like, maybe if I drop this hint on her, <laughs> if I, I stop like, in front of the sign, she'll get the picture. <laughs> I was wondering, like, do you think that was already on a window, or did they put that in a window? No one in LA at that time was probably already on the window. Yeah. Well, and we'll find out later. A lot of the footage was stolen, so I don't know if this was mm. just kind of a little run and gun here. Bring out mm. the camera. Let's get some footage. Yeah. You see the cops just run. <laughs> Uh, so then the scene ends they they pass by a storefront with all these clocks and then really bad ADR dialogue says oh yeah look how late it is come on I gotta get to that pool competition in four hours yeah. which by the way when they're doing the di- uh, commentary they said almost all the dialogue was ADR it's I, I thought so I really <laughs> it, it just it's so obvious because there's no <laughs> emphatic delivery <laughs> no. whatsoever to be found in any of these lines no i don't think they really i mean this was fast and loose this movie yeah. so after they run away he takes her home and i write it's now daylight so they've been out all night yeah and i was like you know 1986 i'm not sure walking around the streets of la <laughs> in that prom dress it's the best idea yeah so he takes her back to the dagger house she gets some so chrissy's in the house right yeah she's back from the morning she gets something from the fridge and then all of a sudden hook walks in the room and he like kicks the fridge door closed yeah. he's all upset he wants to know where she is where have you been <laughs> And I wrote this dialogue. There is just too much to write down. <laughs> yeah. It's too good. But we'll cut in here. Is Hook goes, I'm the one in charge. So hold on. Before we even get yeah. to this, she pours herself some orange juice and she's about to drink it. And he goes, wait, no, no, no. Don't drink that. Don't drink that. And he takes it and he sniffs it. And he's like, that's foul. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love this part. And I don't know if you, you notice this. Where she goes, he's like, I'm the one in charge. And she goes, you said, Mom, a picture of you looking like a wild, wild Indian. Indian. Oh, I got this. And you're supposed to be the one in charge. But the the response <laughs> to this is Hook goes, that wild Indian picture happens to be styling. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that line. 
I hope I you know I wish they would have just cut to that picture. That's what I said. I said I really, really wish we got to see the picture. <laughs> like how do you allude to that and I then not like, show it to us? Like Darby crashed with like <laughs> feathers around him and like a dream catcher hanging from his ears. You know? It was good enough to send to his mom. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't see it. And do you think he hired that same photographer? <laughs> You think that was last year's Christmas card? Yeah, that was the Indian one. He set up a Christmas card. Like yeah, the that. theme last year was Navajo. <laughs> it was styling. Yeah. You send mom a picture of you looking like some wild Indian and you're the one in charge? That wild Indian picture happens to be styling. You don't know what you're talking about. Something about how he's in charge, but she says, well, maybe that's why mom sent me was to look after you. And he says, if that's how it's going to be, I don't even want you here. And she sits down at the table. She's like, all right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then they laugh and they make up. I wouldn't like, no, fuck you and your foul orange juice. I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> Yo, mom, I'm going to go stay with a uh, uh, brother, Tommy. I heard he lives in some crack house. <laughs> He's the leader of some gang, but they keep sending us pictures. I mean, they're all smiling. Looks <laughs> yeah. bad. I, uh, what do you think they do, honey? I think they're like a dance troupe or something. I don't know. <laughs> they sit at this table and they've made up. And she goes, oh, I met a guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, you met a guy? She's like, yeah, his name's Corey. And he's like, whoa, oh, yeah, where's he from? And she's like, oh, over the hill. And he goes, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> he stands up because, again, oh, that fucking valley. Yeah. <laughs> he says, Chrissy, how many times have I told you? You hang around here, you hang out with daggers. If not, just go home, okay? That's it. And I wrote, Chrissy, you can only fuck my friends. Like, <laughs> what he said. Oh, my God. <laughs> look, like, at, look at Skeet over here. He has one tooth, but that thing, the thing that tooth does, so you'll be amazed. I mean, how fucking dare you be from across the hill? Yeah. How dare you be from 20 <laughs> minutes away? So then we get to a pool competition with a little bit more skating, which there's two things about this scene that are noteworthy. Is One, the kid we cut to skating is Tony Hawk. Yeah. Uh, he was 15 when he made this movie or was in this movie. He has it in his memoir and he hates it. He says... Tony Hawk hates it. He says he had nothing better to do. The camera crew was there. He decided to say whatever and skate. It's a cheesy movie and he hates it. And throughout the rest of the commentary, when they talk about that, uh, the guy who plays Hook and the guy who plays Radley keeps saying, Tony Hawk, I'm going to go kick your ass. (laughs) We're going to go get uh, our friend Christian Asoy out of jail and he's going to go kick your ass too. They got got pretty ripped, roaring drunk during that commentary. Oh my God. (laughs) But my favorite part about the pool competition, the other noteworthy part, is the announcer. (laughs) The announcer for this reminds me of, if you've ever seen the movie Over the Top with Sylvester oh, Stallone, yes. I think this is the same announcer, by the way, how they always reiterate the rules over and over. Mm-hmm. Is this announcer gives so much information during this pool competition, it's a, it's insane. Is the, my summer is like... He goes, all right, everybody. Hey, welcome to the pool competition here. Uh, we have a bunch of competitors. Some of them still need to check in. Uh, <laughs> 78 degrees, cloudy, might rain tomorrow, but today we're looking good. We need some additional parking for your friends coming later. We recommend the pot, the lot by the porta potties. Like that much information. Yes, yes. And he even says, he goes, and next up is Corey Webster, but Corey hasn't checked in yet. Hey, anybody seen Corey? And I'm like, he's about to skate. <laughs> He's on the he's, fucking, he's on the fucking pu- yeah, he's, yeah. He's like got his his board over the lip of the pool, like ready to drop in. Maybe like, that oh. was his introduction. <laughs> like, all right, what I want you to do, I want you to announce me. I want you to say, hey, where's Corey? I want this big spotlight to shine on me. I'm going to dive in. Uh, Mr. Webster, we don't have Mr. Weber, whatever the fuck your name is. We don't have a spotlight. It's it's daytime. Oh, really? Well, just say you're looking for me. And I'm going to make this big entrance and be like, oh, my God, he's there. We still need our skaters that made the final cut to get their safety gear on and check in with our starter in the officials area. And at this reading, it looks like any of our finalists have a shot at winning this thing. Among those skaters shooting at the trophies are Mark McCarthy, Corey Webster, Timmy Hanks, Vincent Hanoi, and Lou Range. We still need Corey and Vincent to check in. Big question is, who can pull out the McTwist here in the final round? And oh, by the way, did you see who was judging this competition? It was just like these, the most random assortment of guys in like aviator sunglasses yeah. and stuff. They looked like, I wrote, gangsters and weirdos. Like, yeah. like mobsters. <laughs> <laughs> That's who runs this town. They apparently know a lot about pool skating. 
<laughs> so some guy gets injured, and I wrote, this is what the announcer says after this guy gets injured. He goes, boy, this vertical skating is risky business. Hal Lucio is out of the first round. Boy, Hal Lucio is really hurt. <laughs> Corey Webster's up next. Hal Lucio is still grabbing his ankle. <laughs> Like, <laughs> someone get Hal Lucio the hell out of there! <laughs> no, no, like, could someone get in there? Could someone call the ambulance? Nope, he's really hurting. Boy, this vertical skating is risky business. Hal Lucio is out of the running in the first round due to an injury. He just can grab another warm-up run. Boy, Hal Lucio is hurt. Corey Webster is on deck to follow that, but it's going to be a tough back to follow. Hal Lucio still grabbing his ankle. Corey Webster is up. We'll see what he does. This young man under a lot of pressure. It's hard to come right straight ahead into a heat after the guy in front of you is taking a bad white like guy. Here's the countdown for Corey. So Corey skates around, and I wrote the announcer will not shut up. Will not shut up. Uh, he says, "Boy, how do you follow a guy like that getting hurt? Pressure's on." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, thanks a fucking lot You'd have to be totally stupid To blow this one uh, So Corey's ripping it up in the pool And then a dagger guy comes over To the side of the pool I think it's Monk, their friend And I wrote, he's either car- he's either Holding a handful of nails or jacks Like, <laughs> like Toy uh, jacks yeah. uh, And he drops them in the pool And somehow Corey wipes out but the way he wipes out is just the guy like takes his foot off the skateboard yeah. and then kind of falls over a little <laughs> ah! <laughs> and he falls on the ground and he starts screaming he's like ah and the announcer goes medics Corey needs help here boy he just in- inexplicably fell off his board he still needs to get a score from the judges though boy what a shame <laughs> Kicking him when he's down, huh? Like, who was me? Like, I can imagine Alan being like, no, say something about how he still needs a score. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> so the medics are working on Corey, and the blonde guy, he's holding the nails and or jacks, and he's like, he tosses them up in his hand, and he grabs them, and he goes... <laughs> Daggers. <laughs> Daggers. But this is the best part is it doesn't even cut. It zooms into the group of daggers not five feet from them <laughs> laughing <laughs> and looking at them going like it would be great if they goes, who could have done this? And they're like still laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut it in the skate shop. Uh, and they're just hanging out in the shop while Corey's still, he's getting tended to. And at this point I wrote, Josh Brolin pretty much doesn't wear a shirt for the rest of the movie. I think that's contractually. <laughs> and he looks real greased up. <laughs> he's always sweaty, you know? He looks like he's some thunder down under Nasser. <laughs> <laughs> we need a uh, more baby oil of Mr. Brolin over here. Snap, snap. Oil up Mr. Brolin, please. <laughs> Josh, you're looking great. All right, they're talking about how Corey got hosed and how the daggers think they run LA. And then Bose interjects and goes, Who's the geese? And then we get introduced to Mr. Flood. And somebody goes, Go, oh, Bozo, what are you crazy? That's Mr. Flood, the inventor of Smash Skateboards. Some people say he invented skateboarding. So they say this, but he's not in the skate shop, no. he's out in the parking lot. And I wrote, he apparently rides around in a rape van (laughs) handing out skateboards to kids. Yeah. And I wrote, interesting. (laughs) That isn't far off from something that happened to me when I was looking for my skateboard after it got stolen. No. (laughs) What happened? Okay. Oh, my God. So. Mr. Flood showed up? It it could have been. It very well have been. But it was like, it's like 1998, 97. I just. World Industry Skate Deck. I was so proud of it. It was so cool. It was rad. So there's this uh, record store by where I live who will not be named, but they said uh, when you come in, you have to leave your skateboard there. And uh, well, when I came back, it wasn't there. It got stolen. So I was bummed. So I was, well, I went out for like a good week looking at this plaza to see somebody hopefully riding around my skateboard. I was just 
in my mind back then my logic was well I'm gonna go kick their ass <laughs> and I'm like in like seventh grade I'm like five foot zero at the time <laughs> and like yeah I'm gonna take whoever this is on so I'm wandering around and the first day this white truck this big Texan guy 10 gallon hat <laughs> bolo tie pulls up in this big white van oh, and he goes hey what you looking for I'm like oh my skateboard it's like oh yeah well you want some money I'm like wait what no I'm, I'm good I'm just looking for my skateboard he goes oh, alright well you wanna go for a ride no <laughs> oh, and then I, I he goes okay well bye I come back the next day He's, he's there again. Are you van. kidding me? No, this actually happened. And you live right by a high school, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. This is literally right by my oh house. This my is a God. step below my house. So this, the well, white Chris van was is almost on a milk carton. Yeah. <laughs> so this white van again pulls up, and it's the same guy. And he goes, here, still trying to find your board, eh, boy? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he goes, come here. I'm like, no, I'm good. No, 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 no come here. <laughs> so I like, get like one step. I'm like, no, come to the other side. I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. So he's like, leans over, goes, you know, you're a real good looking boy. Like, oh my I'm God. Like, well, thank you. So you want to come in? I'll get you a new skateboard. I'm like, no man, I'm good. <laughs> oh my so God. I went home and it was funny because that didn't bother me. What's, what bothered me was I couldn't get my, find my skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm telling, I go home and I tell my parents like, yeah, I still can't find it. This guy tried to help me. I'm like, they're like, what guy? <laughs> oh yeah, this guy in this white van showed up two days in a row, rec- <laughs> remembered me and was trying to get me into his van and told me he was going to buy his van. My dad like, hold up. <laughs> We're going to go file a police report. So we went and filed a police report. And I was more descriptive about the skateboard than I was the guy. (laughs) But long story short, I don't know what happened to him. I'm Oh, my God. Almost on the side of a milk carton, Chris. Yeah. True story. That's amazing. Yeah. So Chris had a real run-in with Mr. Flood later on. Yeah. But yeah, this is what this guy's doing. Yeah. He has this van and all these children are around <laughs> it. And he's like, want to see my skateboards? <laughs> and he's wearing this members only jacket and everything. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, he, he wanted me to call him Tex. Call me Tex, boy. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. He goes, That's what? insane. So, uh, you're, I, oh, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. I'm Tex. You didn't touch him at all. Like, give him a handshake. I did. Even? Yeah. Oh the first time I met him, oh I had to reach God. in. Like, uh, I was like, this is, I was actually, I was afraid when I reached in and I was on the other side of the truck or the van. I'm like, you know what? This might be the last time I ever touch anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he could very well just like grab on and not let go and pull me through the wow. window and never hear from me again. So holy shit, Chris, yeah. you were almost raped in a parking lot. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Well, I can't wait to advertise this episode. <laughs> It's weird that I can't believe I've never really told that story before. I've never heard this no, before. I've, I've known you for yeah. uh, over 20 years, yeah, and, and know, I've like, never heard this story. I guess it just has never registered <laughs> as like a topic. Until, like you watch Thrash it, yeah, and you go, like, oh my God, it's all coming back to me now. I mean, I still, I remember it, like it's, it pops in my mind once in a while, but like, like I'll go to the plaza, and I'm like, oh, oh, there's a white van. Oh no, it's not him. But no, no, no. <laughs> I just didn't realize until you mentioned that scene. I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> that happened to me once. <laughs> oh, like, I would have liked it if you didn't even get through the rest of the movie. You just turned it off at this point. You're like, oh, I've had enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I know where this goes. Yeah. Yeah, the cop was, when I told the gave the police where that cop was grilling me more about the guy. I'm like, like, like yeah, I told you about the color of the van, but my skateboard, though, is a wilderness industries devil man is like, again, we fine, tell us more about this A little this van. bit of wear on the bottom, like it's had a few board slides, uh, the wheels, uh, yeah. independent trucks. I had and- a Misfits Fiend Club sticker on it. In fact, I actually did have the sticker when I'm... Uh, Misfits American Psycho came out. It said eight, 17, 18 new songs, and it was under the left truck, uh, the bottom truck with the left wheel. And I'm like, "Are you writing that down?" <laughs> the guy's just staring at me, like, "Really? You were almost like kidnapped and raped by a guy in a van? You want me to?" <laughs> Anyways, well, all these adventures and more on episodes of Grind Band. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So Corey goes out and talks to. Uh, a big old text there at the, in his van. <laughs> um, 
Corey calls out his name. He's like, hey, Mr. Flood, how you doing? Oh, I wrote, okay, so when he walks out, though, he goes, Mr. Flood. And then you see the, the actor, Mr. Flood, get yeah. kind of like scared when somebody <laughs> says his name. Did you notice yeah. that? He goes like, what, where? <laughs> like, like the cops have just yeah. showed up. They're like, they're closing in. <laughs> he's like, oh, 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 it's a kid. Oh, a kid without a shirt on. Hey, I've heard a lot about you, son. Hey, I can, yeah, he's not wearing a wire. I can tell. And he goes, he's like, you're Corey, right? I've heard a lot about you. Hey, you want to see something in my van? <laughs> he says that. And he's like, sure. Yeah. And he opens up the van. He goes, see this skateboard? Yeah. I have uh, this guy. I sponsor this kid. And, you know, for every board I sell, he's going to get $2. And we're going to sell probably 20,000 of these boards. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. And he goes, let me tell you something, Corey. You win that L.A. downhill, you'll skate for me. You'll skate for Smash Skates. And he gives him a card, and he invites him to the factory. Next scene, the factory. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Flood shows Corey around the factory. And they have that, like, beautiful uh, fake uh, screen print. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's just clearly a bunch of stickers. Yeah. Because there's nothing that's going to fold or anything. Because this guy doesn't know how to screen print to save his life. <laughs> Uh, apparently that was a pro skater that was doing the uh, screen printing part that actor oh okay yeah, so he's in the commentary so he shows him uh, he shows him around this factory and he goes you know I only signed the winners the guys that are hot and Corey's like oh yeah I really want to skate <laughs> and by hot guys <laughs> I mean <laughs> you know Corey I look all around for guys these hot guys these hot skaters and I put them in my van you know and they come <laughs> over here to smash skates and I make them uh, do and some I smash screen printing them. I smash him. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll be one of my slaves over here at the factory. Did you like this part where he he picks up this wheel and he's like, <laughs> "Here, bounce it." No, well, he hands it to him. He goes, "Here, take bite a, it. Take a bite out of that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Corey looks at him. He's like, uh, "I'm not gonna bite that." Yeah. And he's like, "You know, this is new space age material. In the event of an atomic attack, it would be the only thing that would survive." And then Corey's. He leaves Corey there for some... Oh, yeah, it goes like, Mr. Flood, line one, line one, somebody got out of the basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, call the gimp. <laughs> Mr. Gacy, Mr. Gacy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he leaves Corey alone and he looks around and he goes, I'm going to skate for these guys. Cut to skating down Hollywood Boulevard. And I put... Okay, so there's two things about this. One... Most of this footage was stolen. Yes, without a doubt. And they said, we just rode around in Hollywood Boulevard with a van and would get out every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> just start skating. Uh, and the other stuff was actually filmed by Stacy Peralta. Yeah. And the Bones Brigade. <laughs> and they just dressed up like the characters in the movie and did tricks. And right. all of this was real. It was like just skating down Hollywood Boulevard like getting into people's faces and all this stuff, all laying over a guy. But I wrote this as funny is because I hate when they do this in movies and in real life. They pretend like everybody who lives in LA just loves to go hang around Hollywood Boulevard. And let me tell you something about Hollywood Boulevard. It is the trashiest trash heap of all of Los Angeles. If you come here on vacation, don't go to Hollywood Boulevard. Mm. Just don't. It is the worst fucking place in all of L.A. It's where all of like the homeless people and panhandlers hang out waiting for all you tourists to walk down the street and be like, look at all the stars. Look at all the star things on the ground. This is really L.A., isn't it? No. No. I hate when people go and, sit and hang out at Hollywood Boulevard in movies because nobody who lives in L.A. goes to Hollywood Boulevard. No. No. You know what? There's two things every one of us that live in Southern California do every week, and that's go to Hollywood Boulevard and look at the Hollywood sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Nobody does it. Every oh, The one time I've been on Hollywood Boulevard in the last couple months was to go to the Egyptian theater to see a movie, and oh, God damn it, it just took like an hour just to get through all the people in their fanny packs. Like, it's a fucking nightmare, this place. <laughs> So they cho- they go down Hollywood you Boulevard. A, you wanted a crowbar through a homeless guy's skull. <laughs> it's terrible. It's fucking terrible. Look, at this. it's like if uh, I this was just saying this to my to you by Hollywood. I was saying this to my wife the other day because we're driving and we have to go. Like we're at Amoeba and I bought new movies for this podcast, yeah. right? And we're. <laughs> 
for some reason I took a fucking wrong turn and we're all of a sudden we're down on Hollywood Boulevard. I'm like, fuck, like I'm all pissed off. I'm <laughs> stuck in the traffic. And I'm just looking at this. I go, you know, every one of these people, all of these people, I feel bad for. I know they're from out of town. They're like, I'm going to go to LA. Yeah. I'm going to go to Hollywood Boulevard and see the sights. And I'm just thinking like, if I didn't live around here and I went on vacation to LA and I went to Hollywood Boulevard, I'd be like, this is a trash heap of a city. Yeah. And I would never come back. And I don't know why anybody would live here. It's the worst of the worst. Mm-hmm. It would be like if you lived in New York and you only hung out in Times Square and the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> like it's just, you don't want to be there. No. Oh, what do we have to eat in New York here? Oh, Red Lobster. Love it. <laughs> so they're, they're skating around Hollywood Boulevard. And I like that part. They go through a parking lot and they jump over that lady's car. Like yeah. They do tricks over a car. And yeah. She's not even mad. She's just like, whoa. Yeah, the one guy like goes over the back, all the way over the top of the hood to the in the front of the car. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to them eating a bunch of Popeyes chicken, which we can see in the background. And Bose has got it all over his face. And uh, the the fedora guy, he's like, "Hey, Bose, you should go hit on these that raw chick over there in the parking lot." And we cut to these two girls, and they're just giggling. So they, he's like, hey, you should go hit on them. And he's like, really? They like me? And then he starts to skate over, and then the fedora guy pantses him. Oh, shit. That's right. I was, like, <sighs> over it when I was watching this. And I'm like, you know what? Let me guess. It's another fedora scene. <laughs> I, like, I tuned out for those, like, 30 seconds. I'm like, no, no, no. These two. So then it cuts from that to Corey going into this phone booth, which they said, okay, so they said that phone booth was a prop. And if you look closely, you can see it constantly shaking as he's in it because it just wouldn't stay still. And I wrote, at this point, Josh Brolin has decided he will never wear a shirt again. (laughs) (laughs) And he calls up the Dagger House and he's like trying to get Chrissy, but Hook answers the phone. And he tells them, basically, she's busy. She's busy for the rest of the summer. And if you come around here, you'll be dead meat. And Corey goes, yeah, yeah, well, if I see you, Hook, you'll you'll be dead meat. Yeah. Back and forth, the same. (laughs) But I love this part as he goes, oh, Corey, one more thing. And he goes, yeah. And then Hook just hangs up the phone. Yeah. (laughs) 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 Oh. You think... Do you think they just couldn't come up with any more insults after that? Like, you know what? What's going to be real? I love that. Is this going to kill him? Is if he just hangs up the phone? <laughs> so then we cut to night skating. And I put run time, run time, yeah. run time. Yeah. Uh, is we just see Corey just night skating for a while. Uh, he goes like under a semi truck. He goes to a gas station. Then he goes to the Dagger House. This is where the movie starts to drag a little bit. And we'll get bit. into that. So he goes by the Dagger House and they're playing a fear song. Which I noticed, yes. which is "Hey" by Fear, yeah. and they cut to inside. I love this. They cut to inside the Dagger House while they're listening to this Fear song, and they're just like, "What I put is, I guess, playing hot potato or something." Because these guys are just like throwing something around the room and like tackling each mm-hmm. other, and I put real straight partying, like. <laughs> Okay, so the party is just a bunch of guys roughhousing with each other yeah. while all of their daggerettes are in another room. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're just playing grab ass with each other. <laughs> they're playing hide the dagger. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote, yeah. So Corey walks around. He looks at that room and he's like, well, nothing I want there. Uh, and then he looks into the daggerette room and they're just like looking at yearbooks together. Yeah. <laughs> like, doing, doing those boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're like Cor- looking through the pages like, remember when we had a future? Remember when we had hope? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I got voted most likely to succeed. <laughs> so Corey climbs up that uh, tree to get to the second story and then there's a lot of second unit shots of somebody falling off a tree. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and then Chrissy just comes out and sees him hanging there. And she's something like, uh, 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 you're a monkey or something. I don't know what the fuck she says. Uh, but then Velvet comes out the window and she sees Corey. Uh-oh. And Chrissy's like, please don't tell anything. Please don't tell Tommy. Yeah, and good luck like, with that. All right. So then we cut to a restaurant. And I put, apparently, Corey and Chrissy have eaten a giant bowl of ice cream. Because, I mean, this bowl that they're spooning out of mm. is huge. It's, I, like, I don't have a bowl this big in my house. Like, 
It's like two times bigger than a salad bowl. <laughs> it apparently was filled with ice cream. Yeah. And you can see, because there's this extra behind them, eating out of the same bowl, filled with ice cream, going, hey, like shuffling this, in his mouth. Yeah, this is the uh, the breakup. <laughs> they have a uh, hate eating bowl. <laughs> I don't know how they would have energy to do what they could do next after eating all this ice cream, but apparently they do. Oh, I do like this part, though, is after he eats that giant bowl of ice cream, she's like, what's that? What's that necklace? And he's like, "Uh, something I made in art class. And he gives it to her. (laughs) Yeah. So he gives her some shitty necklace. And this is like a a true sign of love, Chris. It's a true uh, John Rad quality necklace. (laughs) And he says stuff like, he's like, oh, yeah, you got to check out these drawings I'm going to put on my skateboard when I'm sponsored and everything. And then all of a sudden, two of the daggers show up at the the restaurant. So they got to leave. And they go back to the trailer. And Corey is showing her a picture of a woman being raped by a big spider. Yeah. Because it's one of his designs for a skateboard. Yeah. It actually does look very Powell Peralta in a way. Yeah, but it looks a little... Uh, I would. She uses the word aggressive, but I'd say more like obscene. It's like, uh, like a Danzig comic. <laughs> yeah, it's like the spider has ripped off her clothes, yeah. and he's like, what do you think, Chrissy? This is what's in my head. Yeah. <laughs> With she, a big grin on his face. <laughs> she goes, I think it's a little aggressive. Yeah. And he goes... That's right, aggressive. That sells skateboards. It's like, I'm the spider, and you're the woman. Wow, you really figured me out. Well, apparently not, because she says, you'd like to be held like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I'd love it. (laughs) (laughs) And then we cut to Alan Sachs' least favorite scene in the whole movie, the sex scene. Why is he it his least favorite goes scene? on and on in the commentary about how he hates this scene, and this is what David Winters wanted to shoot, mm-hmm. and he hates the music for one. Oh God, yeah, it's uh, terrible. And he says it. He goes two fucking days for this. Two days to film. <laughs> two that? days. Two days to film this sex scene. Two days. Chris. Where did they start? Like at at, at dawn. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. I wrote down. He hates, Alan Sachs hates the music. He says this is David Winter's favorite song in the whole movie. Oh and all the God. other guys in the commentary go, not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> he also, David Winters took two scenes to film it, two days to film this, and he didn't let anybody else on set except for him, Josh Brolin, and the girl who played Chrissy. So there was no oversee- oversight <laughs> to get this goddamn scene done on time in an orderly manner, in orderly fashion to <laughs> go be days. on budget. Two days. I wrote though even if alan doesn't like it this is incredible this is <laughs> quite possibly my favorite sex scene in any movie it, would you, okay. is, it, is it at the crown's dinner oh this makes any crown sex scene this puts it to shame <laughs> yeah. this is amazing yeah. this is like 80 sex scene yeah uh, personified yeah so we have this incredible music the slow undressing Chrissy has a very serious face like it's her first time which yeah. I thought was a little awkward yeah. <laughs> it's like so Josh Brown's going down to kiss her and she's she's definitely got the look like okay this is it yeah <laughs> I wish I didn't leave that tampon in <laughs> I don't know are there any candles lit I don't know uh, <laughs> this is nothing like how I dreamed it to be <laughs> So I bet there's lots of kissing, there's chest kissing, and at this point when she's kissing the chest, Alan's like, this is borderline pornography. <laughs> the really? are, yeah, he was really upset about it. Oh He's my like, God. what is this? I can't believe this is in my movie. And I wrote, candles are lit. There's like a bunch of candles lit. Well, the- <laughs> <laughs> this is just incredible. So they finish up, and Josh Brolin, he's like, all right, goodbye. And he just watches her leave. And I wrote, so he's not going to walk her back tonight? He's had enough? <laughs> he just goes act. like, all right, see ya. Got what I wanted. Hey, Go home and walk through LA in the middle of the night. Have fun. <laughs> all bow-legged. <laughs> and she goes, he goes, I'll call you later this week. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, no, tomorrow. And I wrote, I already got the claws in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would have been better if I see as she was walking away. He just like threw change at her back. <laughs> you need some cab fare. <laughs> like fast. So Corey goes out skating after this, and the daggers are watching him. And I wrote, I wonder if they saw what went on in that trailer. Ooh, because that was her brother. Yeah, 
And like as soon as he leaves, they're like, "All right, we got him." And then "Wild in the Streets" by uh, Circle Jerks starts playing. And "Wild in the Streets" was not written by the Circle Jerks, believe it or not. This is a shocker. I did not know this. Apparently, Alan Sachs says, and it's confirmed in the credits. "Wild in the Streets" was actually written by one of his friends, and it's about him and Alan Sachs's life growing up uh, in New York City. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Uh, which Wild in the Streets was always one of my favorite songs. I love that song. I loved uh, when I'd see the Circle Jerks live and they play it. It was always great. Yeah. But I had no idea it was for this movie and written by one of Alan's. Can Texas you ma- believe this? Is like that song comes on, you just think of, of thrashing. You think that's yeah. what Keith thinks of? It's like, oh, we're gonna do the thrashing song now. I don't think Keith gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, so they're they're getting into the chase to Wild in the Streets, and then I wrote, "Some guys are foiled by the slowest moving vehicle <laughs> possible, a street sweeper." <laughs> so Josh Brolin like skates down this street. They're going down this hill, and then the street sweeper pulls out, going all one mile an hour that street sweepers do. And some of the skaters apparently just can't turn around it yeah. <laughs> and run right into it. <laughs> <laughs> then they go to this big parking garage and they're going through this parking garage really fast and if you saw there's a cat that runs by in one of the scenes and it was a black cat that just showed up on set apparently oh and it just ran through and as alan sex said the cat scared the hell out of me <laughs> bad omen <laughs> <laughs> so they go through this big parking garage the guys are falling off and so okay and the last thing i'll say about the skating scenes is alan says you can tell when david winters film skate scenes and when stacy peralta film skate scenes yeah. because when alan winters film skate scenes everybody looks really sl- or when david winters film the skate scenes everybody looks like they're going one mile an hour <laughs> because Because you can't just film skateboarding with a stationary camera. It just looks like nothing's going on. If you look at the Stacey Peralta footage, they're always on a skateboard and it gives you a sense of speed. But in these parts when like guys are flying over things and all this, like when the guy falls off the parking garage and all that, that, it looks really bad because there's no motion to it. Yeah, it's... They're not going fast enough for yeah. that. It happens like, oh! <clears throat> so Alan complains a lot about the skate footage, yeah. and he says that it just wasn't shot well. Mm. And it's like, well, you were on set. Yeah, dude. Well, Produced. that's when we find out he was on set, but almost all of the daggers and Alan Sachs uh, were very high on mushrooms while filming this movie. Good for them. As well as lots of weed. <laughs> And because no, we'll find out movie. is so Corey grabs onto this bus and he like gets the driver to let him in and Hook catches up because he he goes on the back of some nerd on a Vespa or something gets him to pull him over there and this is in the commentary where the guy who plays Hook goes now somebody may or may not have been really high on psilocybin mushrooms while this scene was going <laughs> on <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and maybe for the rest of the movie. <laughs> Yes. So like Corey gets on this bus and then Hook gets on the bus and he's like looking around and he's looking around on the bus for him. But the bus driver keeps saying 75 cents and Hook just doesn't look at him. And eventually they give up and one of the guys goes, what happened to him? I guess he got away, but I know where their ramp is. And then we see that Corey somehow got on the roof yeah. of the bus. Yeah. I'm not sure how that happened because maybe when the door opened, he ran when the door opened for... um. I like to, I'm just going to call him Jake from the scars. But when Hook, <laughs> when Hook comes on, I think right when that door opened for him, he like Corey, went up. Yeah, got to the back and up. Which is weird that the other daggers didn't, didn't see him see climb. That. Yeah, but you who know, knows? Who fucking cares? I don't know. But then we cut to a scene of them just burning this ramp, the ramp locals ramp, and they celebrate as it burns. They throw their shirts on it, their drinks, and I wrote, "It's surprising that nobody at the house where they live, mm-hmm. where this ramp is." Or the neighborhood seems to care. Yeah. Oh, they're just having a big bonfire. It's quite a fire. (laughs) (laughs) Like this whole ramp goes up (laughs) and they all leave slowly once the ramp's done burning. But apparently in the commentary, they said that they really did just kind of go out in the middle of the night in this really bad area of Hollywood and just... (laughs) Hurt the shit out of this ramp. So no and, permits? And no, 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 and no firemen showed up or anything. <laughs> I believe it. And all the guys were just drinking beers, pounded beers, <laughs> just burning this ramp. Beers and fire go really well <laughs> together. So then we get to the next day. And I wrote, the Daggers had the brilliant idea to write Daggers Rule on the burnt <laughs> remains of this ramp. So the ramp locals are looking, they're pissed off. And they said in the commentary, by the way, <laughs> if you look, that this was all picked up six months later. 
they didn't film this originally and the guy who is the blonde guy in this movie they didn't have him so if you look you'll never see his face in a lot of these early right. shots and it's just a body double yeah with a big curly wig right yeah <laughs> yeah I, re- I really yeah i saw that i'm like that is a terrible wig <laughs> So they just skate for a while, and they're going to go get the daggers. And then for some reason, Corey knocks over a kid, and he helps him up, so he's going to be late to the dagger house, yeah. and this will begin to play. Get to the dagger house. Uh, the blonde guy comes up, and he's like, I want to see Monk. And then Hook comes out, and he's eating some life cereal. <laughs> Which immediately made me hungry for life cereal. I love life cereal. I love how he walks out of the house, though, really high. Yeah. It's very obvious. And he's just got his hand in this life cereal box <laughs> labeled so out. so the munchy food. <laughs> food. Of- <laughs> uh, and he's just munching down the cereal. He's like, well, what do you want? <laughs> oh, Monk, hey, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the blonde guy's like, I want money for my ramp. And Hook goes, yeah, something like, here's some money for you or something. I think he like gives yeah. him a dollar or something. Yeah, he goes, too. Here's a dollar. He gives him like a some obscene amount of it's an insult what he gives them also so they get in a fight and i did like that somebody adr'd in the line yeah come on monk kick his butt yeah. <laughs> so then the blonde guy kicks monk's ass uh but then hook comes over and kicks his ass yeah and then Corey finally comes up he's late and he gets in a little tiff here with hook but then chrissy comes up and she breaks it up she's like tommy tommy and i love this line it's in the trailer but i like how they say this line twice he goes, it's just a game, Valley Boy. You like games, right, Valley Boy? <laughs> they got to drill this Valley Boy thing in over and over again. I know. But I like this. Is in the background, there's an 80-yard line of another person, <laughs> one of the gang members. He goes, he loves games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that it's is so, so me. Savage Streets. It so reminds me of, I'm going to rape that bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For um, people that don't know, that's a Savage Streets reference in episode <laughs> four, I believe. It's just the game, right, Valley Boy? Yeah. You like games, right, Valley Boy? He loves games. So he tells them, let's meet at the half pipe at 9 p.m. And they're going to have a joust. <laughs> and he... Flesh joust. And then Hook goes, be there. Cut to little Stevie with sunglasses on, and he points at him. He goes, "No, you be there." <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, uh, I wish. I hope that was that kid's audition. <laughs> <laughs> and then it cuts back to Hook, and he goes, "You shut up, you little punk!" <laughs> like he's intimidated by little Stevie. <laughs> and I just wrote, "Being from the valley is the worst." <laughs> yeah, you have so much to answer for. So Chrissy, she's all like upset. She's like, "Corey, you can't go fight him." And he's like, "I'm going. That's that's the end of it. You know, it's gonna happen. And if you go, you're gonna get hurt." Or she's like, "Oh, if you go, you're gonna get hurt." And he's, and she's like, "You're never gonna get pro sponsorship and blah blah blah." Because at this point, pro sponsorship's a big deal. You're never gonna get assless chaps, a little leather <laughs> hat, leather vest. And he says something like, uh, how come you know your brother won't get hurt, huh? And they just cut. Hook and his friends drinking, quote, beer, which is that what they used to sell at grocery stores apparently before our time, which is generic beer. Yeah. That just said beer on yeah. the can. Yeah, that uh, reminds me of how the uh, well, the font the adolescents used on that Blue Album. That's kind of <laughs> a poke at that. It was rad. But I love this part. So like they're drinking their beers, and Chrissy stops it, tries to stop them, and Hook's like, I could have creamed that mother. But if you look, there's this great extra standing next to Chrissy as she says her lines. And if you look, he has the best reactions to everything. And she says something, and he goes like, he's he raises his eyebrows. He's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody he's was giving like, it his all. Yeah. <laughs> His eyebrow, his, his like forehead was sore from raising his eyebrows so many times for like twelve hours. He probably filmed that scene for the commentary. Uh, the guy who played Hook says that's like a really good friend of his. And every time he would hang out with that guy, he would turn his back, and then all of a sudden he'd turn around and he was getting in a fight. He would always be beating people. Up. So Chrissy goes into the room and she talks to Velvet, uh, and Velvet apparently doesn't agree with Chrissy anymore. And she's like, "Look, you're either with us or against us, yeah. right? This fucking Valley kids." So then we see them getting ready for the fight because, of course, of course, we can't just have them show up. They need to prepare, just like they need to prepare to go to a dance. Yeah. As we see Hook standing in front of a mirror, applying face makeup. <laughs> the wild Indian is coming out. 
and I wrote, and then we cut to Corey, who has about a hundred candles lit in his trailer. Like, I'm not over exaggerating. About a hundred candles lit as he prepares himself mentally for this fight, which probably took more time to light and blow out than he does to get ready. Yeah. It's probably more expensive than just buying electricity. <laughs> <laughs> then we cut to Velvet cutting off a lock of her own hair and putting it on hook as she stands in the mirror while he does his makeup. And I wrote, I think I think personally that Hook wouldn't let Velvet do his makeup. No. <laughs> Like, I think he wanted to do it himself. He's like, no, you'll just mess it up. Yeah. I need to make sure it's real good, Velvet. And you don't even know how to do face makeup. You don't even know. <laughs> All right? I can't dance looking like that. <laughs> so the daggers skate over this half pipe. Uh, and the ramp locals ride over in Bose's car. Okay, and we get I to the half I really pipe. wish they all, for the joust they both showed up in, like, knight's armor. Oh, God. They would have been, like, and then, like, actual, like, lances. So this is not real, this whole joust thing and oh, all yeah. this. Like, oh, this yeah. is, like, totally made up. Yeah. Uh, and they make fun of him in the commentary. Like, what are we even hitting each other with? Like, who puts a fucking... Like, so the joust materials they use is just a stick with a chain with a boxing glove taped to the end of it. I thought it was like a fluffy sock <laughs> in some of the scenes. I couldn't tell what the hell it was. That they just use as apparently some sort of mace. Yeah. You know, if you ever saw an episode of Jackass, they recreated this scene. Oh, they did. And Johnny Knoxville dresses up like Hook with the face <laughs> makeup and oh, everything. That's awesome. And they do a joust just like this. But this is probably one of the best scenes in the movie. Is they were out all night apparently filming this scene. The lighting is great. There's all these people holding red flares, and we have this amazing joust scene where it really just con- consists of uh, Hook and Corey going down a, I guess what they it's call a, a half ramp. pipe. Yeah. Was it a half pipe or a vert ramp? Because it looked really. Freaking... It just looked like a like a drainage pipe. Oh, okay. And they just hit each other with these boxing gloves, but then eventually kind of give up <laughs> and, and just start, start beating the shit yeah. out of each other. You're like, you know what? This is getting nowhere. Because I wrote at one point, this jail seems very uneventful. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, uh, Hook knocks Corey off his board, and then he just starts uh, hitting him and hitting him and hitting him, and then Corey just starts beating up hook and then for some reason hook gets the better hand and starts dragging Corey over to this fire pit because somebody lit a whole bonfire in this pit and then he somehow breaks Corey's arm yeah and then the cops show up and everybody runs away yeah because he uses like his gauntlet right and just starts whacking on him yeah yeah so we cut to Corey's rv chrissy comes in okay so (laughs) we cut to this rv and Corey's just sitting at the table with this cast on his arm. Chrissy walks in, but she just rolls a kangaroo on a skateboard, and yeah. it hits his cast. And she's just like, thought, you, thought I'd cheer you up, but he's not in the mood. No. So he gets all upset, and who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Run time. As Alan says, this was all added on later, and he doesn't like any of it. It really drags down everything. Yeah, it did, man. So Chrissy just says something like, maybe I'll go back to Indiana, and he's like, all right, who cares? But there's that part, this good part where she goes, why can't you use your good arm? And he goes, yeah, I could. And you want to know what would happen? And then he just hits the kangaroo off the skateboard with his good arm. Yeah. And he goes, that would happen. <laughs> So they get in a fight. She leaves. She drives off. She drives off in a car, which she never had at any other point no. in this whole movie. No. Like, how does she get around? <laughs> Did they have, like, this train of skateboards that she kind of <laughs> sat on the back like a caboose? So Corey runs after her, and I wrote, too late, buddy. She's gone. Cut to the dagger house. Oh, this part's great. So we cut to the dagger house, but we cut inside at a close-up of Hook frantically playing air guitar. <laughs> <laughs> like he's having a seizure. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> that was basically and, my audition for every band I've been in. And they just, they have him do this air guitar routine, but everybody's watching him. Everybody. Yeah. And when he's done, they all start cheering. <laughs> <laughs> so like music is playing they all watch a guy do air guitar and when he's done they're like yeah you really did it <laughs> what <laughs> and then, okay but this is the best part is after he does that and everybody cheers chrissy walks in and hook goes hey chrissy you just missed my show <laughs> <laughs> and then she says i didn't know it stopped yeah oh! Oh! And everybody goes oh so she tells hook she's going home And he says, uh, he's all upset, and he's like, come on, it was just a game. And she's like, you know, my friend's arm's broken. And he's like, what's the matter? You can't take a joke? (laughs) (laughs) 
And I wrote, it's not really such a joke. You know, <laughs> you broke a guy's arm, hook. <laughs> and she says, yeah, I can't take you. Oh. oh. <laughs> you think like the writers were like high-fiving each other, oh, like yes. back and forth? Slapping each other's asses, yeah. <laughs> I wrote, she zinged him. Zinged yeah. him hard. And I wrote, Hook is left looking like an idiot. And then Velvet walks out to go talk to Chrissy. Uh, and she says, who cares? Like, they, they get something. Chrissy just said she's leaving. It's like, blah, blah, blah. But they get really close. And I wrote, it feels like they're going to kiss. Because they get real, they like, like, real cheek to cheek at one point. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on here? We're taking this rivalry to the next level. <laughs> So then we cut to Velvet getting a bungee cord from her car. Because the whole scene was like, hey, Chrissy, you can't close your suitcase? I think I got a bungee cord in my car and I'll help you close it. Okay, I guess we need an excuse for her to go outside. Yeah. So we cut to Velvet. She's getting this bungee cord out of her trunk. Corey comes up and he's like, I want to see Chrissy. She says she's already dropped her off at the bus station. Tells him he screwed up. He leaves. And then we zoom in and see Chrissy's still there. Of course she's still there. Yeah. Because it was only one second later. <laughs> Then we cut to the ramp locals and they're drinking. And I put, it looks like Corey's just drinking a bottle of Grand Marnier. <laughs> Which I was like, I, you're not supposed to just drink that straight. No. <laughs> and then he says, I'm going to do the race. And then Hook drives Chrissy to the bus station in this great scene where he's driving in the uh, dagger van. Mm-hmm. And all the dialogue is 80 yard. Very clearly. clearly. Yeah, because there's no other noise whatsoever. <laughs> uh, they have a little heart to heart. And Hook says stuff about how he cares about her and he's only trying to protect her. She says, I didn't need your help anymore. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not a little girl. Who cares? She gets out. Then we cut to the Corey training montage, which Alan says he hates. He says this drags down the whole movie and they shouldn't have even done it. And they should have just cut right to the downhill because all of this is fucking useless. Yeah. It's just like him, like skidding and like going, "Eh." yeah. So, okay. So Corey duct tapes his hands and everything and he trains for this downhill but he can't skate more than five feet with his cast on. <laughs> and he falls down and he pounds on the ground. He's like, damn. And Alan at this point goes, any kid on a skateboard, I'm really sorry at this point. I know this is not skating. This is horrible. Don't even look at it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, then we got to the bus station and I put, Chrissy's apparently slept here all night. She buys a one-way ticket to Indiana after she wakes up, which I'm like, you couldn't have done that when you got there. Yeah. Because oh, because the same announcer from the skate competitions at the bus station. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "All right, everybody. Uh, just in case you haven't woken up yet, hello, welcome, good morning. Uh, the next bus is Indiana, and it leaves in about five minutes. So everybody, you better wake up and buy your ticket. And we're running out three quarters of a tank here. We're going to stop by me for some gas in about sixteen, fifteen minutes, maybe. Uh, make sure you empty your bladders at that point. After that, we'll go on the road for another six hours or so. Which, by the way, he has a busy day today. <laughs> He does. Because he'll be seen pretty soon. Corey, back in the training, he's getting better, but he's still falling. And I wrote, can it really be that hard? Like, to skateboard five feet with a cast on? Yeah. But there's that part where he falls off the board and he does, like, the Wrath of Khan, like, no. Yeah, yeah. But then the bus passes by. Yeah. And she's on that bus. Yeah, I thought it was actually an interesting shot. I'm like, why are we following this bus? Uh, She's on it. Yeah. Alan hates that show. Do you think they're like, all right, and on your knees, screaming, cue the bus. Go, 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 go. Pedal to metal. We want one shot at this. Alan hated that. We have this bus till five. Yeah, he was like, he, he was like, this is so dumb. Yeah. Uh, but there is a little uh, Easter egg. Is when she's on the bus, she's reading a Seventeen magazine, which is what she used to be in. Yeah, okay. For that, no one gives a shit. Oh, okay. So we cut to night in the bus. Uh, she digs through her purse and she finds that shitty necklace. <laughs> and for some reason that just changes her mind and she's like ah, I, just, I just just gotta go and the bus pulls away and now she's left on the side of the road at night and i'm like real safe right? yeah <laughs> middle of nowhere you think any bus driver would have done that in real life it's like yeah i left this little blonde girl in the middle of the door she knows what she's doing she's a grown woman yeah uh, so she pulls away, uh, the bus pulls away, leaves her there. She hitchhikes and an RV picks her up. And at one point in the commentary, one of the guys goes, Ellen, I know this is the same RV that Josh was sleeping in that whole time, right? There's no way they gave you enough money to get two RVs for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just still flex. He's like, hey, I don't know. I don't oh, re-. He goes, no, he goes, I don't remember. I was a little stone. That is correct. 
<laughs> so she's in this RV with these old people, but <laughs> so but I like this is she's drinking from a mug. And did you see what this mug says? No. It says soap opera people. Fitting. <laughs> Fit team. So then we cut to Day on the side of the road. It says it's 380-something miles to L.A., and she's trying to get a car to stop for her, which I wouldn't think would be that big of a problem. Then she throws out that leg, she yeah, lifts up, sure. hikes up her skirt a yep. little bit. doesn't work. Eventually, she gets a ride from a trucker that even they say in the commentary looks a lot like Large Marge. <laughs> from the Pee Wee movie. Yeah. Then we go to Hook putting on his downhill outfit. Where he has that, like, road warrior spiked glove. Mm. (laughs) Okay. So there's this part where he's, like, tying this glove. And he always has to be in a room full of people unless he's in front of a mirror. And he puts on this glove like it's the power glove in The Wizard. And he just raises his hand in the air. (laughs) And they all put in their hands. And he goes, dagger! (laughs) Cut to L.A. Massacre parking lot. The ramp locals are wondering where Corey is. Uh, Hook shows up in the Dagger Mobile. <laughs> well, you forgot the one part when they're doing but, that. And one guy goes, uh, Daggers are going to rule the LA Massacre. The legend lives. <laughs> and then they do that little thing. I didn't even thing. hear that. I oh, God. Hear it was that. great. <laughs> one of the extras, one of the guys in the Dagger gang. Oh, man. You're going to scare the hell out of those guys. Daggers are going <laughs> to rule the LA Massacre. The legend lives. Yeah. <laughs> So Hook shows up in the Dagger Mobile, and I wrote, I guess the blonde guy's also going to be in the downhill, because he's like, I need to get ready, guys. I'm like, yeah. I don't even know he skated. Yeah. <laughs> he comes in rollerblades. <laughs> and I wrote, at this point, I go, I'm not sure. I didn't even know this guy was doing it. I'm not sure anyone knows his name. No. I'm not sure they even said it. He's that guy when you're going out with your friends, and like the unknown guy just kind of tags along. You don't know whose friend he is. Turns out nobody knows him either. He just kind of sees you guys hanging out and tags along. I think this is that guy. Yeah, well, I told you the other week about that guy in high school yeah so when i was in high school this is gonna be one big retrospective of our lives i know this movie is fine man it's bringing up a lot of memories that i didn't know i had (laughs) so when i was in high school this kid just one day i i met some kid never seen him before in my life all right and all of a sudden this kid starts talking to me in this class and um and he just starts talking to me and talking to me and i'm just like all right whatever i'll talk to this kid and then the next thing I know after, like, my next class, he's outside my class. And he's waiting for me to, like, walk to the next class. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess this kid saw me or something. And then after that, he would always be outside my classroom door, like, waiting for me to walk to my next class. I don't even know who this kid was. Yeah. I didn't even know he went to my school. Like, I, I almost thought at one point he was a figment of my imagination. <laughs> like, uh, okay. So this happened for like a straight week. And then people kept coming up to me and they're like, Who's, what's with that kid? I'm like, I don't know. They're like, oh, I thought he was like your best friend. I'm like, no, you know him probably more than I do. I don't even know this guy. And somehow he got my phone number and he would call me when I was at home and like want to talk to me and all this. And like, oh, I didn't even know this kid. And then... At one point, he just disappeared, and I never saw him again. This was two weeks of my life. I couldn't get rid of this kid, and then all of a sudden, never saw him again. He was like your little short round. For yeah, a while. He, he was. <laughs> it didn't help. He was Asian. Oh, <laughs> 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 and you're not even gonna believe this, Chris. I'm not even kidding. It's right. funny you mentioned short round because the first time I met him, this is not a joke. I am not making this up. I swear to God, this is real, and somebody else can confirm it. The first time I met him was in video class while we were watching Temple of Doom. <laughs> true story. All of it is true. It can, it can be confirmed. I swear to you. <laughs> so, okay. Back at the LA Massacre parking lot. So all of a sudden, Hook shows up and he starts talking trash to the other guys. And he's like, yeah, I'll see you up there. Blah, blah, blah. And he like slaps the blonde guy in the face. And then Corey shows up and they're like, oh, good. Our only crew member that anybody cares about is here. Uh... <laughs> And Corey and the blonde guy go off to go race. And Bose goes, boy, I, I hope they waste Hook. And the fedora guy goes, yeah, well, I hope the mountain doesn't waste them. <laughs> <laughs> then we cut to helicopter? Question mark? Uh, this reminds me of like how they fill in things that are about to happen with like police cars and maybe a helicopter is showing up. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like, something's going down. <laughs> huh? 
And then I put, thankfully, the announcer from the pool event and the bus station is here in this helicopter, although we never get to see his face. And he's the announcer for the LA Massacre. And of course, he explains everything for us. And I mean everything. He says something about, hey, I'm up here high in the sky on this helicopter. And boy, I can tell you, it looks real serene from up here. The the weather is really great. Oh, boy, you know what? I even have a walkie-talkie. I have a walkie-talkie with me that has me connected to the ground crew so I can announce from up here. Oh, wow, people came from all over, everywhere, around the country and around the world to take place at the L.A. Massacre. Did I mention this walkie-talkie takes double A's? Not triple A's, but double A's. They're Duracell, not Energizer. Fight them at CVS, not Walgreens. I'm linked up with a walkie-talkie to our race officials. I understand that they have just given the first call for our racers to report to the starting line, so won't be long now. From where I am, overlooking this long river of empty roadway, it's kind of serene. I can see traffic starting to back up along Pacific Coast Highway at the finish line, and our course is completely clear and ready for head-to-head racing. Skaters come from all parts of the country, Colorado, Washington State, Northern California, and although there are some teams, it's pretty much every man for himself. So then we get to the last scene in the whole movie, which is the race, the downhill race. But before it starts, we get that part where Hook like it intimidates Corey, and then Corey flips him off. Yeah. And then I wrote, and I know you noticed this. They start the race, and we see all these people skating, and there's one guy in the crowd who has a cowboy hat on and like a full like western regalia like <laughs> that I didn't I couldn't figure out why or how he got there what like is Walker, he doing Walker Texas Rangers showed up do you to think the it was that guy from that parking lot that I encountered <laughs> Chris I wasn't saying anything until now but I think Texas in this movie Tex showed up <laughs> oh I know a lot about skateboarding and I bet you that wasn't even his real name that was like his alias <laughs> he has like several aliases like I'm gonna get to tell this kid I'm Tex <laughs> So then we just see a bunch of people crash in the race. The race goes on for a while. I do like, though, in the middle of the race, they would have these cutaways to kind of cut away from the action. Yeah. And the cutaway was slow motion shots of guys holding cups that say Pepsi on it, splashing water on their face. And I'm like, yeah. okay, this is a downhill, <laughs> not a marathon. <laughs> they need water. <laughs> they need water to go downhill. And if anything, it's like a distraction. This is like I a... Don't- yeah, <laughs> it's going to make it worse. You're going really fast down a hill on a skateboard. The last thing you want is to gra- stop, grab a cup of water from somebody, splash it on your face <laughs> while you're moving. Because I thought it would be better. I thought, I swear, like, the guys from the side were splashing it on them as they rode by. No, no, okay. they're, the guy's holding the cup himself, yeah. label out, Yeah, and he splashes exactly. on his face. And Alan at one point says, I'm glad we got to clear those Pepsi cups. So they weren't even sponsored. They just... <laughs> they actually had to clear the fact that they used the cup. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, I'm going, well, I'm going 60 miles per hour. I need to get this Pepsi cup. I need this water. I was like, it's a downhill race. It can't last more than 15 minutes. And you're telling me there's refreshment stops on the way down? No wonder only two people last through the whole race. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, so they, some guys are getting their refreshments. People are flying through the air. Some I guy, like the guy that flies through the air and ends up in a tree. Yeah, <laughs> that was my favorite. <laughs> He's like, ah! <laughs> that is a film. Just, oh. If they at the end of the movie, I would have been so happy if they cut to like a fire truck getting them down oh, out of the amazing. tree like a cat. And that's when you see the medic dispatch, which was real medics because yeah. they broke his leg. Tables are knocked over. More Pepsi cups of water. Guys fly through hay bales. One of the daggers flies on a tree, which you mentioned. Corey knocks off Tony Alva from his skateboard, and he goes flying off. Uh, there are only two people left now, which is Corey and Hook. They jostle for the lead for a long time. Corey throws Hook off his board. He comes across the finish line. Cops holding his <laughs> speed meter, and it yeah. says 63. Yep. And then he leaps across this big ramp, and he wins the $1,000. And Alan, at the end of this movie, kept saying how he hated how the jump was pulled off. He goes, this is filmed all wrong. <laughs> really? He's like, I hate it. Doesn't look good at all. No sense of speed. Stupid. He goes, this was, when I got the footage back, it was a real disappointment. <laughs> uh, Maybe you so- should have been on set more, buddy. <laughs> So Mr. Flood comes up while everybody's raising Corey up in their arms, and he says, Welcome to Smash Skates, kids. 
And then Corey spots Chrissy at the end of the crowd. Nobody knew she was there. No. And he goes, I don't believe it. How'd you get back? She says, don't ask. (laughs) (laughs) Did they, they like, track down her knees all scraped and bloody or something or what? (laughs) She wiped her mouth. (laughs) (laughs) And then Hook walks up. And all of a sudden, all is forgiven. He just goes, hey, Corey, hey. It was a great race, man. It's a great race. And I put, I, w- I put, I really would have loved if him and Hook kiss had made up at <laughs> yeah. this point. Or like he like grabbed each other's junk, <laughs> give a good honk and walk away. Uh, yeah, and he looks, he's like, Chrissy, your boyfriend's a real good skater. So Chrissy and Corey, they make up. The theme song plays, fade to black. And I wrote, 100% pure perfection. Yeah. <laughs> so very long episode today. Sorry for the length, everybody. No, we're keeping it in. Oh, hopefully this was entertaining for somebody. Yeah. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. I love this movie. It's not a grindhouse movie. It's not an exploitation movie in that type of sense. But I think it fits. Yeah. And it's our goddamn podcast. We can cover whatever the fuck movie we want. So, because Chris and I want to cover a movie from the 2000s once that we saw that is uh, definitely not Grindhouse or anything, mm-hmm. but is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. And it stars a very famous comedian. Oh. <laughs> and we, on a whim, watched it one night and it was wow. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to say it because I want to cover it one day yeah. and it's going to be a surprise and everybody's going to go, what the hell movie is this? Yeah. And I hope if I can get one more person to watch that movie, <laughs> my life will be fulfilled. Yeah. All right, Chris. So recommendation. Yeah. Abs- well, yes. Um, if you're a skateboarder, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which Chris and I both skated yeah. all through high school. Yeah. And this is, um, it's uh, an abomination to the name, <laughs> to, the, to the culture. <laughs> Uh, it, but it's fun. It's enjoyable to watch. It's 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 campy as hell. Oh, if you haven't seen this movie, you have to see it. It yeah. is great. Uh, I think that DVD is way out of print because the only copies I saw were very expensive. Now I got this the day it came out on DVD, and it was like I don't know ten bucks at oh. the time. It's probably been like ripped to DVD out of one of the actors' trunks at this point. But who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard to find. Uh, where did, I think you found it online somewhere, but I don't oh, know yeah. if it's streaming or anything. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, it is streaming. Okay, but not legally, so you know. Oh well, I'm, I'm sure gonna... it's on Amazon, yeah. or you could probably buy it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. If you can't, that's a real shame. But if you can c- go watch this movie, go watch it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh oh. Well, oh, what's too late? I hear the horn. Jesus. Christ. I heard it every time. <laughs> the same time. I swear to God, they're like waiting. They're like. All right, Bobby, pull up. Right when they finish, they're going to pull up and, and honk it so they know we're here. Yeah. All right, I, I can't wait to see. Okay, so uh, it's it's pretty easy. It's pretty natural. Okay, because I kind of have one idea. What, where do you go? Well, when she's hitchhiking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets you know, she gets in that big truck, but then we cut later. We don't. We never really see her get dropped off. Well, we're at the competition, and we're going to cut to... A horn sounding off. It's very familiar. It's the straight arrow. So the straight arrow starts going faster and faster with her inside, and it plows through a bunch of the audience. <laughs> and the reason why we don't see a lot of the skaters finish is because the straight arrow is actually going, is actually racing down this hill with the skaters and taking them out one by one, like running them over. So there's nothing left. There's no reason why they're just doing it. He's here, probably. Hey, hey. <laughs> he's drinking that jug of yeah, wine. He's like, I'm just taking out the competition. She's mine. She's mine. <laughs> and so, she decides to tuck and roll before the end. And that's why he asks, "How'd you get here? Don't ask." <laughs> that's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, she has so, no recollection of it. If I have to come up with one, it's that uh, Mr. Flood is a character we've actually met before. Oh! Since this movie takes place almost ten years after the van, mm-hmm. at one point Devito's like, "Bobby, I know the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a van, and I'm gonna do this thing. You ever heard of it? It's called skateboarding. Mm. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, Bobby, is I'm gonna get a van, and I'm gonna roll around with skateboards in the back of it, and I'm gonna sell it to young boys <laughs> on the side of the road." <laughs> And I'm going to keep bringing these wheels out. And I'm going to tell them to take a bite and all sorts of things. So I think, uh, yeah, DeVito is just Mr. Flood. Yeah, 
Yeah, I could see that. He's he, trying to branch out. He's yeah. trying to be business savvy. You know, he's putting on the years. He really can't get the ladies anymore, so he's going to get young boys. <laughs> I would have loved the part of at the end is if they showed Mr. Flood's van mm-hmm. and like a kid tries to run out of it and he runs over and he's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the door back up. Or he sees that cop with the speedometer. He's like, yeah, uh, you can uh, escape for smash kids, son. I gotta go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got warrants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not the parking ticket type. Well, thanks again for listening to us on The Grind Bin. I'm Mike Wood. I'm Chris Mann. And if you want to get in touch with us, go to grindhousefilm.com, or you can find us on twitter.com slash grindpod. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram. You can email me. I believe it's grindbin at gmail.com. I've been getting a lot of emails, lots of suggestions for movies, actually, uh, and a bunch of people that want to be on the show. Great. So that's interesting. No, it's really good. Uh, we get a lot of resumes, which is odd. Apparently, people think I'm a movie producer. Yeah, so. I noticed that. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> the good practice kid. Well, I do have Alan Sack's email address, so I'll just forward on those over. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can come up with the next big hit. But yeah, leave us a comment on the website. We're trying to get more people to engage there. Some people do, uh, but I'd like more people that listen to this show too. If you listen to this show, for God's sake, send me something. Let me know you're listening to it. Yeah, we're we're thinking about getting like a forum that's more. Um easier to manage for everybody to come and talk instead of just the website where it's all kind of scattered around yeah. different, different yeah. threads. So. I wonder if anybody would. Yeah. I know there are people listening to it. Show yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> come into the light. <laughs> Although if you could rate and review us on iTunes, that would be a real big help because yeah. the more people that rate and review you, the uh, higher up you go on those podcast charts and mm-hmm. uh, that would be nice. And yeah, that little rectangular purple button says subscribe you can also click that too yeah. I mean, you, don't, you don't have to listen to it when it comes on your phone just hit subscribe and, and the world will be a better place yeah click the button you little bitch <laughs> <laughs> ah, and that's it <laughs> hey Bobby I got the money yeah I need the key but you're a hooker get that goddamn thing out of your mouth what is knockers spooky got 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 no real poaching Brenda, we're gonna play a little game.